All right, I will now call the regular meeting of the Niles Main District Library Board of Trustees to order. It is, what, 7.01, 7.02? 7.01 no. p.m. on Wednesday, August 21st, 2019. Diane, please take the roll. Uh, Karen? Here. Carolyn? Here. Diane? Here. Patty? Here. Linda? Here. Here. All right, uh, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, before we actually begin, uh, unfortunately, the, the library uh, had a death of one of its staff members. Uh, Sophie Hedberg recently passed away, mm -hmm. and I do want to take a minute of silence um, as we think about Sophie and uh, what she meant for our library. Okay, we can get started. Do I hear a motion to approve the minutes of the regular board meeting of July 17, 2019? So motion. Second. Second. Thank you. Okay, Eddie, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, uh, Patty and Linda. Linda. Can you just look at me? Are these four? Yeah, these are new ones for today. Yeah. And it was a side correction. Okay. Oh, thank you. And that's for change of board and this report. All right. Cool. Okay. Oh, they're right here, Karen. Okay. All right, uh, do we have any corrections? Um, Patty, you want to start? Mm. I was fine with it. Thank you so much for it. You were very well. Diane, anything? Yeah. Everything's good. Yeah, great. Linda? No. No. Carolyn? Um, I'd like to add two statements. Okay. Uh, one was Trustee Durgold requested future minutes include comments from both sides of topics to provide an accurate summary. Okay. Where would you like this? Um. I think I kind of said it after we approved them, and it's right before we approved them. I mean, however you think you should list it is fine. Um, and then the second one, at least I know where that one came from. Um, the second one was um, as a result of looking at the consolidated um, income statement. So it may have been after your treasurer's report, I think. But the statement there was trustee Durbler requested an update for the $778,770 year-end variance and suggested reducing the 2019-20 levy by this amount. So those were the two statements. So you want that after the Treasurer's report? I think that's when I brought it up. All right. Any uh, issues with that, Penny? No. No, Linda? No. No. Okay. And everybody, okay. everybody okay with that? Changes? Yes. Yes, great. Thank you. Okay, you're very Is welcome. Mm -hmm. um, yes. So we are going to. Uh, do I have a motion to. Uh, where, do I have to say, do I have a motion again? Okay. Uh, to approve the amend minutes as amended? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have a motion and a second, Jerry. We both agree. Right. Oh, okay. Okay, then we just call for a vote. Okay. Daddy? Uh, I'm sorry, Diane, please go. Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. 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 Okay, we will now have the swearing in of our new trustee, Sue Wilsley. Wilsey. Wilsey. I knew I would do that. I'm so sorry. Sue Wilsey. You'll never do I will. I will get it, I swear. Uh, Sue and Diane Olson, if you would please come forward. 
to you. Come over here. Okay, you're in the second. Are we in a picture? You're in the picture. Move on. So you can have a nice bright center. Ready? Ready. Hi, state your name. Sue Wilsey. Do Solomon Square. Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of Trustee. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of Trustee. Of the Niles Main Library District. Of the Niles Main Library District. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, Sue. Thank you so much. And welcome and welcome yeah, aboard. Well, welcome. Welcome, welcome aboard. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, this is our public comments portion. Uh, let's remember when addressing the board, speakers will be limited to five minutes per registered individual, 30 minutes overall. All speakers must maintain a professional demeanor. Our first speaker is Steve Doherty. Steve? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's fine. Hey, it's going to be a night for school. Close enough. Close right. enough. Hi, folks. You know me. I live in the community. I've lived here 45 years, 46 years. Um, tonight, I want to talk to you about the FQC assessment report. It was dated April of this year. Uh, as a facility manager for 45 years, this report should be used as a tool and not a must-do. The author of this report uses the life expectancy rule when recommending equipment and building improvements. This board has approved a budget for next year that includes $1.5 million to replace the roofs. And I just want to note this report does not state or recommend that you do that. And another $467,000 for uh, building maintenance, excuse me, and another $467,000 for equipment. You also approved uh, $228,000 for building maintenance. I have stood here before and told you, I believe this report may have been misinterpreted. Please, I believe you've all been given this report, please read it. And if you have questions, please, please bring it to your administrators. Now, I know you've already approved the budget for next year, but this board controls how it's spent. So you know you've approved it, you don't really need to spend it. And I believe you don't need to spend a lot of money on the roofs. Please read the report. Uh, life expectancy rule. I could come into your homes right now and use this tool, and I'd be recommending that you replace TVs, refrigerators, furnaces, roofs, air conditioners in the next five years. Would you believe it? I doubt it. That's not the way you and I work when it comes to our home. The life expectancy report is a rule of thumb. It's not a life rule that you have to go by. If you wouldn't follow my recommendations, so I hope that you bring this, bring that thought with you to this meeting, or to this uh, board. Please read the report. I do have one question I believe I can ask. I understand that the, uh, the library has over $10 million in reserve. Is there a cap on reserve? Can you answer this, Susan? There is not. There is not a cap? Yeah, but we also do not have $10 million in reserve. Oh. Then I've heard it. I thought I heard that in a previous meeting. Could you tell me what you do? A special reserve fund. Yes. One million and seventy-one. Pardon me. One million and seventy-one thousand dollars. I believe you're confusing reserves with our in our cash on hand. 
checks for the 10 Well, he was referring to reserves. He was right, referring to reserves. He, he heard the 10 uh, mil. Okay. I heard 10 mil dollars in serious pay, and I misunderstood, and I apologize. Uh, that's all I have. Thank you. Please read this report. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, we will now have uh, our um, president's report. Okay, so um, we all know that some of our meetings have been somewhat combative and confrontational. And, you know, my theme is as long as I am here on this earth is to try to get us to be collaborative and uh, celebratory. And we as board members, uh, I hope that we're excited about what the library has to offer our community. And I hope that we should be sharing in that enthusiasm and excitement to the public. So I'm going to ask all of us to, as, as, as often as we can, to attend a program or an event that we, have, we would normally not attend, or use an online application or program that we would normally not use. And then I would like, during our meetings, uh, I'm going to change this president's report to say more of a trustee's report, and then we can have a time to address each other just very briefly, you know, what did we experience, what did we do, you know, the, the, the enjoyment of it. Because I, I think um, part of our, um, what we should really do is be enthusiastic and, and bring this enthusiasm to the, to the community. Uh, so that's, that's, that's what we're going to, uh, that's uh, my proposal to do that. And we'll see how that works. Uh, give it a shot. You know, we can always uh, change it if, if we can. When are we starting that? We're starting that um, next meeting. Okay. So, yes. Unless, you know, we, we, we're, everybody's welcome to, to talk, maybe when the director's report comes up for something okay. that you've attended. Because I've, I've attended um, three things. Ah, ah, we'll save them up. How many directors in reserve? Three. So I asked Susan also in, in this uh, area, I had asked her to create some name badges, uh, name badges for each of us. And I thought as we attend the program, we can wear a name badge, just designate that we're a trustee. If, if you're so inclined, um, then maybe it will uh, encourage people to come up and talk to us or, or recognize us and, you know, to um, um, just generate some conversation with the, with the residents as we attend these things. You know, um, yeah, yeah, we can do it out of the trustees. We have mayors. Oh, we do have mayors. We have mayors with our name. Oh. But I don't know if everyone still has them. Yes. I don't remember. We can check them out. Okay. Yes, if we need new badges, uh, let's ask. I don't know this. I have to definitely check. Check. Okay. Especially the way my house has been with having everybody there. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Back to you. Yep. The badges? Yeah. Why don't we have them? Um, well, we might make a slightly yeah. different design for trustees anyway. Yes, so, you know, oh, oh, I might agree. have an old name on it too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. probably does. Yes. So, yeah. yeah. We'll just, yes. Oh. Let's get new badges. Yeah. 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 Maybe we can put our <laughs> role. <laughs> we can put our uh, our, our role. pictures. Yeah. Our headshots. No, no, with the ten year, uh, with the ten year younger filter. Right. All right. So, as part of my report, just to say what I've done this past when I did attend the Fandom Fest. Uh, which I thought was thoroughly enjoyable. This year I found it to be what I consider to be right-sized. It was very exuberant in the past. Uh, this seemed to be um, a better fit for what was going on, but I loved the layout uh, on, the, on the second floor. Yes. Um, yeah, it had that, it had, uh, oh, and Victoria, uh, your, your, your um, background that you guys did was just fantastic and brought the kids in and took pictures and, and it just it, it enticed the kid, all of the, the patrons to go through the library, maybe in places they wouldn't normally have not gone. Mm -hmm. Just really great. And and the kind of the people in costumes, I really got a kick out of the they had a couple of um, life size um, Doctor Who dial, dialects. Yeah. Yeah. Dialects, yeah. Dialects, yeah. Dialects, yeah. Whatever, yeah. 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 Really. Um, and on a personal level, uh, I, I talked to a lady who published a, a book on poetry. And, and we really had a nice conversation about how, how that goes about it. And I think that's what this is all about, right? You know, getting something at a personal level out of this, this experience and this event. So I highly applaud uh, the library staff for doing this this year. It was really a wonderful event. 
anyway, it's, that's what I found. So, so let's uh, move forward with a, a nice level of enthusiasm here for our, for our library, because that's what we're here for. Okay, next item on the agenda is the Treasury's report. Patty or Greg? Um, oh. Okay. Okay, so um, July is our first month. Um, when you look at the percentage of the budget that should be expended, it's 112, or just a little bit more than, uh, than 8%. Uh, we do get um, a lot of our revenue in uh, July and August, for that matter, so we actually have about 19% of the budget, uh, of our budgeted revenue in the, uh, in the last month. Uh, property taxes, for example, are at 20% of the budget. Fines are about 9%, just a little bit above uh, the pace that we expected. Uh, replacement tax, which is uh, uh, which comes from the state of Illinois, is at 17%, uh, which we expected. And investment income is at 14%. Passport income is at 8%. Um, if, you, if you look on uh, the bottom of the page, salaries are right on budget at 8%. On page 11, library materials are at 12%. Uh, of course, you know, uh, this is the part of the year where we start to uh, pay subscription renewals, and uh, those are for the entire year, so we expect uh, materials to run ahead of um, our budget for the first part of the year and then catch up with the second part of the year. Library operating expenses on page 11 are at 16%, where we've had some uh, annual expenditures, again, uh, paid in the first month that, that caused this, but you know, the library would be fine for the year. Employee fringe benefits are on track at 8% as our utilities, and we've spent zero on uh, capital expenditures. Uh, these are all on page 13. On page 14, uh, building and equipment maintenance is uh, on target at 8%. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to take them. Uh, going around the room, Karen? No, no questions. Caddy, you're the treasurer. Have any questions on your report? Uh, no, I. I asked him about the couple of things that were up, and I kind of remember from last year, this is when we pay all that. So it's on track, as far as I'm concerned. Diane? Uh, <clears throat> we have questions at this time. Okay. No. I don't have a question about the treasure report, but I did have a question about um, three checks listed. In, can I ask that now? Yeah, go ahead. You know what? Um, it's in the regular um, um, bank register report, page 15, and they are towards the bottom. It's um, check or transaction number um, 54, 55, and 56. I couldn't find, well, the top two are embrace sexual wellness. They're each $200. I thought maybe it's a registration, then I thought maybe it's a program. But when I went to the other breakdown where there's more information to explain the checks, they weren't listed. So I'm just wondering if somebody could tell me, was that registration to go to uh, like a, um, some kind of presentation? Uh, it is a... Uh Two programs here at the library. Oh, that um, okay. But I do not have an explanation for why it's not in my uh, expanded. Record. So, do they happen already? Um, I think one is this week. It's the one on teen, teens and consent, and the other one I cannot remember. Okay, all right, that's fine. And then the other one was um, the fifth third bank. I wanted. To, I was actually trying to figure out what the charge was for, and that one wasn't there either. So, could. Someone explain we're writing a check to them. Is that a deposit of some sort? So uh, what we do every uh, pay period is we withhold uh, money from uh, employee checks as they've asked us to do to go into accounts on their behalf for flexible spending for health and flexible spending for uh, child care. Oh. Um, the way that we transfer the money uh, to the uh, account that actually holds these funds is to write a check to the Fifth Third Bank and deposit it in their account. Okay, so they, there are 
our help in um, child care services accounts for our employees? Yeah, this is a permitted under Section 125 of the Internal Revenue Code. Oh, no, I'm familiar with the process. Oh. I'm just saying Fifth Third is who takes care of that process. I didn't know. Fifth Third, we have a checking account at Fifth Third uh, that all this money is transacted through. So we deposit what we withhold, and then if an employee uh, files for a reimbursement out of that account, we write them a check, and it's drawn on this particular account. I understand. Okay. I got it. All right. Thanks. Well, that's all I had. Thank you. Great. Sue Wilsey? Not at this point. Great. <coughs> yes. But I am. You know, I notice I made a little circle on here. So sure. <coughs> I do have a Yeah, question. go right ahead. On page 20, um, this large expense of $23,000 for OCLC and CCC in it. I know. Yes. Kind of what they're used for, what could you think <coughs> about? Uh, CCS is our uh, cooperative computer services. That is our catalog, our patron database. Um, it's our cons computer consortium, and they and we get our subscription to OCLC through them, and it's on a prorated basis based on the size of the library and the size of the budget. Uh, and um, and they have gone to quarterly billing this year. So that's why it's spectacularly higher than the past. That was our first quarterly payment. So what, you used to pay it monthly? Monthly, monthly. yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes so it, yeah. it actually will be you know, less bother for us and sure. less bother for them, but it does make it a bigger pill to swallow. <laughs> yeah, okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, I will now entertain a motion to approve the payment of bills for operating expenses of $277,484.34 and payroll expenses of $273,435.38 for a total monthly expenditure of $515,992.72. and seventy-two cents. Right? Which one is right? $919.72. Okay. Great. Sorry about that. Uh, do I have a motion? Motion. Use those two. And who second, please? Okay. Anybody have any discussion on this? Karen? No. No, Patty? No. Diane? No. Linda? <coughs> Carolyn? Uh, no. Yeah, Sue? Great. Can you take a look? Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Uh, no. Diane? Yes. Ready? Yes. Linda? Yes. Karen? Yes. Sue? Great. Next item on our agenda is the director's report. Susan. Okay. Um, what you may have noticed as you came in that uh, Dave has the portico being painted this week. So um, very happy. <coughs> it came out yesterday, like when it was just getting ready to storm and everything. So we had to wrap up a little early, but it is getting done, and we're very happy about that. <laughs> And we're also happy he did not get struck by lightning. Oh. <laughs> um, I wanted to, I don't know if anybody noticed yet, because it's only been up for a day, but we have a new collection down in the Commons. It's called Quick Pick Magazines. And we're actually copying off of the Displains Public Library because they had great success with these magazines where they go to the, the store and they buy the special issues of all the magazines. We can get subscriptions to the magazines, but these are the extra magazines that come out on particular topics. And so, um, we're budgeting some of the money toward that, and they work kind of like a hot pick, and and they've turned over extremely fast already. So it's like all those things that are kind of tempting when you're standing in the grocery store aisle. Mm -hmm. And now it's right here in the library. So uh, I think they will be high circulating, high demand items. So very happy with technical services for getting that going, and uh, a particular uh, person in adult services for going to the store and picking them out. What is so the loan? Um, that's only going to be for a week. One, yeah, one week. Um, it's, it's not restricted to NIMS card holders the way the hot picks are. So that's why we're calling it quick picks. It's a little bit different. And we're not cataloging each one of them. They're all going on one record. And uh, it's making it just a real 
quick and easy way to supply what people want. I mean, she literally is going to the store and picking them out for the rent. So I, I think uh, that would be. What does that mean? They're going to pick on the number. Uh, you know, more normally there would be People Magazine would be on a catalog record for People Magazine mm -hmm. with all the details about that. This is just on a record that says Quick Pick Magazine. And so it's not, so you won't be able to go search for them in a catalog in the same way. They really, it's a browsing collection. What is there that you can't place holds on them? Um, it's just what you see is what you get at any particular moment. And, and then you got a house. They might not be the same way as you each time. Oh, very much not. Yeah, because the high turnover and the holiday items and things like that, that you know, you don't but do you know forever. But you know for Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's still connected. The barcode is still connected to the person's record in the database. And the barcode is still connected to this specific magazine, but it's not a specific magazine. So you wouldn't know really what they're checking out. Do you want to talk about that? Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, so the, the titles, so there's the bibliographic record, then there's the item record, and the item records are attached to that generic record, but each item record spells out which magazine it is. So that the title is there. So when it's checked out by the patron, the patron is matched to that. So you know the title, but what it is. Yeah. Yeah, okay, fire code, but it's... It's within the records that you'd be able to know which one it is, actually. Absolutely. Yeah. Not yeah. really checking it out, just checking out towards that record, the yes. whole record. Right, it's Got checking it. out towards that generic Got record, it. but the items are all accounted for. Within. Right. right. That makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, okay, so then um, you may have noticed at the end of the director's report where there usually is five pages of statistics that we have gone um, we worked hard to put together a more graphical version of statistics for you. We can find it on page 45. Um, yeah, I actually turned to that page initially too with the fake library statistics. Yes. Um, yeah, so uh, I tried to think about, and I consulted other libraries, and this is what many other libraries are doing these days. I've never seen a library take out as many statistics as we did in the past. And I felt like it was, so I've been doing this job for five years now, and none of you have ever asked me a question about the statistics, so I just have to figure it's just not that useful information. But I thought this, as the governing board member, might be much more useful to you to be able to spot trends. Mm -hmm. So it gives you information, tracking information over, looking back at time. Um, it's got, so let me just walk you briefly through it. Uh, so the top thing is the total number of library cards that we have. Um, uh, for the 2019, we can even break it out between the Niles card holders, the unincorporated Des Plaines card holders, and the unincorporated Glenview card holders, who are all card holders here in the Niles Main District Library. And then the gray up at the top represents our total number of residents. So you can kind of see what percentage of the residents have library cards at this point. <laughs> Obviously, uh, you know, sometime we might do a version of it that is looking more at households, and that will look a little bit different. Um, the next one is the new and renewed cards, and anytime it says year to date, it means the fiscal year. So we've only had one month in this fiscal year, so this really is literally just one month of information, mm -hmm. but for each of these years. So it's basically July of 2017, 2018, and 2019. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see that we're doing a little bit better with that. Mm -hmm. uh, on the other hand, conversely, looking at the visitors to the library, you can see that our number has been dropping a little bit. Mm -hmm. Uh, again, it's a one month, but just like for the month of July. So it, it doesn't tell you a lot, but as the months accumulate, it will give you more of a picture of how we're doing. Um, the youth services, she mentions uh, in her report that she changed the structure of the summer reading game, where they used to, you used to be able to get your prizes for visits to the library, mm -hmm. and they changed that this year to being a different way of counting how, when you get your prizes. And so it did hit our visits, there's no question about it, you know. Well, yeah, because then they did that with the little ones. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I noticed the difference in yeah. with, do I get something today? Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we'll look at that. Um, and then the last the one at the bottom here, how did we, who did we help, is a list, is a pie chart of some of our services. It's not obviously every service that we offer, um, but it breaks out. You can see, you know, some of the things that we do are the passports, the homebound visits, the test proctoring, and notarizing documents. The rights and documents is still a very uh, popular service that we have. Turning to the next page, we have our checkouts here today, broken out by India. So you've got print remains still very popular here. 
Um, but you can see up at the top that streaming and databases has gotten to be a bigger percentage of it. Um, it's, it databases and streaming are calculated together, uh, but a lot of the things here are streaming. It's like Hoopla, Canopy, Tumble Books, things like that. Uh, next we have collections. So this is just a snapshot of how many things we have in our collection at the, at the end of the fiscal year, really. So you can see that you know, we still have very substantial number of books and magazines. That's still the majority of our collection. The next hunk is all electronic uh, things, e-books, e-audiobooks, and e-magazines, like Flipster. Next up, DVDs, Blu-rays, and video games is still a very popular part of the collection. And then CDs and audiobooks. Uh, we left off a couple things that are very, very small that we just, you couldn't even have spotted them at the top. Equipment is one of them. I forget what the other one was. Then programs year to date. Susan, I have one quick question. Yes, Do you count like, something like Hoopla in your total number of, in your collection? Or is it just counted up in the um, under streaming databases? Is Cindy in here? Yes. Do you remember how that ended up this year? Um, Hoopla is in streaming, but it's only what is checked out, not the entire collection. Is that your question? Yeah, I mean, you, yeah, you have a collection, so you're not counting really the obviously that's available. The, right, you're just yeah. counting what's being yeah. used. Yeah. But on uh, OverDrive, on the other hand, it does count everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you say OverDrive is going away? No. No, no. Uh, no e-read away. The um, oh. Access 360, that was the one that we discontinued, because it just wasn't getting the same mm -hmm. usage. Sure. Yeah. Um, on programs year to date, uh, you've got three years going back. Again, it's just the snapshot of the month of July. The blue line, the axis on the right, and I have to give Mr. Fritz full credit for this because these, uh, these little statistics would not look nearly this nice or uh, understandable without all of his assistance. So number of programs uh, is in blue, and that's the chart on the right, and then attendance is in green. So you can see that we popped back up a little bit on the attendance after last year but down from the year before that. And then the last thing on here, I just thought it would be fun for you to see what our top 10 databases that people are using are. So the uh, brown at the bottom is all of the other databases, but the top number one database that people are using is Reference USA, or Rec USA, as we call it. Then you've got Hoopla, Morningstar, and you can see the others. But I thought that might be a sort of useful thing for you to get a better feel for what databases we have, what people are using, what people might not have any idea that we do have that you could tell them. Consumer Reports is there in the top ten. Um, so that's uh, so we, that's an example of something where we have it both in print and as a database people can search. So that's the new statistics. Thank you. I was impressed when I saw it. Interesting. Yeah. 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 the change every month. Yeah. Um, I, some things will be there every month. Circulation is obviously going to be there every month. Door count is going to be there every month. But other things we will be highlighting different things. And if you have any particular thing that you'd be interested in getting a glimpse of, I would like to know. So this uh, compares July of 2017 to July of 2018 to July of 2019. So next month, are you going to be doing July and July August? Yes, it's, it's cumulative. cumulative yes. As we go along? Yep, so you'll be getting okay. a picture of the year. Okay. Something that were uh, a snapshot of the whole year, but on those I thought it was more it would make more sense to mm -hmm. track it that way. Mm -hmm. yes. I mean, in, in the previous statistics, we just compared month to month. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't know how useful that was. It's very useful to us internally, where we can see how some of our decisions have worked out. But maybe not that useful to you. So I think the cumulative will be more useful to you. So let me know if you have any suggestions for other statistics. And then last of all, speaking of statistics, we have finished the, uh, annual, the Illinois Public Library Annual Report. Pass out copies of that. It is not official yet. I have not sent it in. I would particularly need Tim and Diane to look at it because they have to electronically sign it. Um, and it's and I'm not going to walk you through the entire report because I know we would like to go to bed at some point. But it's something that you can pour over yourselves a little bit. Ask me any questions later on. Uh, this is a collaborative effort of a number of people on staff, but. Cindy did a ton of keeping track of statistics as the year went on so that she could pull things together. Well, it's just, it's got, you. you know, basically a snapshot of everything we have and the, um, the state of Illinois is required. It's not optional. It's due to September 1st. Right. And right. and um, 
gets if, if, then, if you like more data than this is a ton of data that looks back for the entire 17, 18, or 18, 19 fiscal year. So are you going to give Diane and me a link to this? Or how does that uh, no, you just take a look at it hopefully sometime in the next day or two and let me know if you accept it and then I'll make the names. Oh, okay. It's, you, it, it's not like you have written down. You'll email us. Or you'll, 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 you'll let me know if there's any problem, which I can ask. It, um, it makes you verify it that you haven't missed anything at the end. It seems to be all. We don't have anything to check it against. I don't know what they were doing this last year. Yeah, but there, there really isn't anything to this. Yeah. So that is all the information I wanted to give to you guys. Do you have any questions for me? Yeah, go ahead, Karen. Uh, um, I have a question about uh, a few things. Uh, yes. The director's report about the signage out front. Uh -huh. And I have a little question about that strip of land there, whether that was our land or the village's land. I guess I thought it was ours. That, that side of it is ours. The other side of the sidewalk is the village's. OK, so are they, I, I, I guess I thought from the, what I was reading here that they were going to change the. They are going to change the other sidewalk. and. Uh, uh, intersection, that intersection where like you go, see, where you stand while you're mm -hmm. waiting for the next light to change, they're, yeah. they're updating all those, and then they have a lot of landscaping on the other three corners, but they left ours more or less alone. Okay. Alright, so this is going to look pretty much the same? Our, our part looks like it will look pretty much the same, but as I said, um, it, it's still two years out, so if there's something that we want them to do, that we could get them to do, at, you know, that would benefit the library, we can ask for it. You've been at these meetings. What they're planning for the other corners, will it distract from our signage? If we uh, I don't think it will. It's all just landscaping. It will actually just upgrade the entire corner, and the whole corner will look much nicer. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah, because all the, you know, will if you look kind of stand it out? Well, no, because they're going to do ours, too. They're just not adding a lot of extra trees. Like, he, okay. he said he wanted to, we, so he said, notice that we already have trees, so he said, we're, we're just going to leave your trees, things like that. Okay. Yeah. Um, I have another question, mm -hmm. and that is regarding the um, Illinois Public Library Association meetings, which yes. are coming up in October. Yes. Uh, and there's a trustee day on October 24th, it appears, which looks like it's pretty much being run by Plain Park and Jenkins. Looks like they're putting the whole thing in. I don't think so. But they are, uh, they're paying for the lunch, and then they're repeating the thing that we saw at the trustee forum of their mock trustee meeting, mock, mock board meeting. But, okay. but the other things are being done by okay. other organizations. All right. Is, is there a church for us to attend that oh, yes. trustee day? Yes, and it is. It is. Are um, we still in the early birds? Mm -hmm. Yes. The, the, yeah, I just got an email today. So you can sign up just for the one day. Mm -hmm. and My thing was I just wanted to see if anybody else was going. Because I was thinking I'd like to go to it, but I kind of think it would be nice if more than one of us went. Um, I'm thinking about going. I have to take the F more so I'm So do I. Considering it. Um, no, do you know where it's, it's in Tilly Park? Tilly Park. Park. We don't have an address for it. Anything. It's a convention center. Okay. I don't um, mind driving. I don't know where it is. It's not. It's a hike. Did you say that the Mark's library name was canceled? No, no, uh, Kleinthorpe and Jenkins did their the version of a mock board, board meeting at the trustee forum from, yeah, back in March, and they were keeping it for this. Oh, I see. But I probably would. All right, so when would we have to let you know that we want to? Well, I mean, it, it, yeah, yeah, I think if you just showed up on the day, it wouldn't even be a problem, that it would be better to pay the bill. Yeah, so, that's, that's what yeah. I would think. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I would think. You know, do you remember off the end what the I didn't, you know, I tried getting into the website to see and I was not able to get to the cost of it, so I'll actually probably need to call them or something. What page was it? It's page 43 and 44. Okay. I knew I saw it before, but I put my number first. So I, I can let you know what the cost would be if you want that information. Uh, all right, well, <coughs> um, you know, when. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm more interested if I, you know, I'd like to go with at least one other person, but if I have to go by myself, I'll do it. Well, I'd be interested, but there's no reason for all three or four of us. If, if nobody else is going to. It's valuable for everybody, I would recommend it. 
I've been to just about everyone in the past 10 years, and there's always new information. There's uh, exhibits where there's vendors, and we'll be able to see technology and things that are available. It's just specific to a it's pretty easy to price for um, you know what's available there. Um, I think those are the only questions I have about the other two parts. Um, no, except I'm pictured on page 36. <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of small. I'll make it bigger next time. <laughs> <laughs> I had a look. Which one am I? Okay, I remember. I put an arrow in case anybody wants to know. That's what this is. Oh, let's see it. When is when we have other? I don't want to do that. We were told we could say our team waiting. Okay. So I'll wait until I'm done. Or is it after we adjourn? Diane, the. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no. no. Carolyn? Um, yes. Um, Susan, I'm looking at your statistics, which I think are incredible, but I, I think I'm not understanding the total library cards, um, the description on the top. Mm -hmm. um, it says, unincorporated Glenview is like that yellowish color, unincorporated, this blank is green, then it says Niles cardholders, and then it says residence cardholders, but I don't see the blue for resident card. It's super confusing, because the first two years, 2017 and 2018, we don't have it broken out by uh, all the other by the things, so it's just everybody in the district. That's how many cardholders we have residents in the district, whether they're Niles, Displains, or Glenview, are all lumped together. And okay, so all of those colors represent residents then? Yes. Okay, yes. thank you, because I'm thinking, so are Niles cardholders residents or not? Yeah, no, that's, yeah. that's fine. Okay, no, I think it's a great report. Thank you. And then I just had two other um, items that I read. Let's see. Um, well, the first one is on page 36. It's um, Wynn and Stacy gathering materials for a local homeless and mental health resource guide. And um, it looks like they're going to um, gather information. You said they're populating it for both the website and a paper version. Mm -hmm. And um, I just wanted to mention that um, I think it's wonderful that we identify that there are homeless people and people with mental health issues that could use a lot of information or resources. But I have a concern about library staff trying to take on the role of um, professionals that are actually experts in this area. Um, I believe you should still try to um, have this information available to individuals who definitely could benefit from it. But I, I'd like to suggest that maybe um, we connect with either human services or national organizations or even city and state um, agencies that are, that are actually um, the professionals for the homeless or mental health and maybe we could be links on our website for them or what you distribute could actually be from them, where we're not taking on um, the position that we actually are the experts, and what we're passing out is something that that these different agencies would pass out. I just feel like that's not our role to try to mimic who these other people are, but we should figure out a way to maybe pass the information along. I think to to try to, to create it, and um, and then um, somehow distribute it isn't always as accurate as it should be. And, and these are some pretty serious issues. You know, there's a, homelessness is definitely a big issue, and um, and so are mental health issues. But that was just my point um, to that. Um, I think it's great that the library has taken on that um, interest. I just feel that maybe we should be guided by agencies that can give us. The documentation or give us access to their sites and we could just be links for everyone so that was just my thought on that 
Yeah, hold on. I Carol. thought when I was reading through this that you did mention that we they did refer to the Niles Family Services Department. When I when I read it, I I can't read. Right. I, I, I wrote back. Also. I yeah, I'm trying to exactly yeah, what I read. I but, well, what I'm saying is, and I'm sorry if I could still have the floor. What I'm trying to say is, um, we want to make sure that the documentation we use is really theirs, not ours. Right. So right. the fact that you confer with them and you talk with them, that's wonderful. But um, well, I don't want to think that the library is creating its own documentation. I mean, I'm trying to figure out why we would even venture in that direction if it already exists from an agency. Just my thought. Are we? Uh, well, I mean, the role of a library is to be the place to go for information. Um, and right. an information resource. So this is just to consolidate information. We're not offering advice. We're not um, telling people what they should do or anything like that. We're just giving them lists of resources. We will be working with all of that. I mean, that's where they're getting the information. So okay. the kinds of agencies you're talking it made about. They think they were creating it themselves. Well, no, it's, it's more of a matter of consolidating information, okay. getting it all in one place. It's because we have, like, at the end of the day, the, the particular incident that sparked it was we had a teenager who showed up, you know, had been in the library all day, and at 9 o'clock, he didn't want to go anywhere, mm -hmm. and it's very hard to find a shelter that will take a teenage boy. Well, they, and, and so they contact uh, so, human services because they have all those connections. Well, they did. They, they, they okay. do. Yeah, they called over there, but they were just having a really hard time finding anything. And we thought that you know it would be nice for the staff to have some kind of a resource that they could start looking for ways to help people, give them addresses because they're asked questions like that at the reference desk quite a lot. And so it's really not us trying to tell people where they should go. It's just giving them. The, the options, but very much working with um, family services. Family services is an incredible godsend. Or in other agency that could sure. supply you with, uh, you know, right. documentation that you would right. have to pay But then, for. but then we're pulling it all together. We're I'm just, okay. we're just consolidating right. the information. Okay, and then just as a side note, do you recall? I think you <coughs> gave us a homework assignment some time ago, um, and it was it was by Rails. I think it was called Accessible to All, Serving Youth and Young Adults with Disabilities. Or maybe that was an option. That it was, was an option. Right. Okay. okay. <coughs> and it was, um, it was a presentation by Rails. And I guess what I wanted to say is, for example, Cindy and Lisi will be attending a Rails Safety Roundtable on uh, Safety in OSHA. And that's great. But um, there's, again, I just want to make sure that we connect with OSHA. We connect with the, um, the maybe the national safety organizations when it comes for information. Because when I um, actually viewed this particular video by Rails, the first thing she stated was that we are not experts, but we are leaders. So I think it's great. They, too, were taking on um, this subject matter, which is really interesting. But we can't take on the role as experts. So I just want to make sure we keep funneling ourselves back to who the experts are. Because in this case, even Rails admits they're not the experts. Right. So I just wanted to, you know, I'm not, I just wanted to point it out and, and I mentioned it's something to keep in mind when we do all of this. But I, I think they're great ideas. I mean, I think usually Rails, or in this case, it's the HR roundtable, which used to be called management association, they, they put together, you know, people from all the different libraries or, or all the different organizations to kind of share information with each other, but they usually do have an expert that is leading the discussion. Oh, great. Yeah. Okay, thank you. That's, that's all I, that popped in my mind. Thanks. Great. Thank you, Carol. Uh, so I would just say I appreciate that you are doing all these efforts to get this resource sharing, gathering, and consolidated because it will be helpful for staff because staff that are faced with you know these types of issues of mental illness and homelessness all the time and to give them something that's handy is going to be great help. Mm -hmm. great. Okay, very good. Uh, next order of business. Okay. Communications. Communications. Which we sometimes skip over, but there was one thing in particular I wanted you to be aware of. Page uh, 48, we have a letter from the National Society of the Daughters of the American yes, Revolution, and it actually included a $100 donation. So, yeah. 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 Way to go. Oh. <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, so genealogy. They liked them. Oh, so, cool. Yeah, nice. yeah. 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 That, that wasn't clear for just a moment. Very nice. Okay. All right. Uh, next order of business. Uh, first item on the new business is to review the suggested changes to the bylaws. Uh, and after the first discussion, uh, so, so let's first discuss it all. And then after our discussion, I will ask the board if we are ready to vote and if someone can make the motion that we would choose. So I want to preference this. Um, this was a. a um, is this? Is this? It is our proposed pilot. Right. This is an effort by uh, myself and Susan. Uh, um, I don't know. As as I as I took the position of president, I just read through the bylaws and then I started noticing that a number of things. And this is more. It, it really, it's just housekeeping. I, I like to refer to this as housekeeping. Oh, sure. Thank you. Oh, do we need more copies? Okay. Yes. Okay, it's fine. We'll share. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll go page by page. I, I, I think um, for the, uh, yeah, we'll kind of just go page by page. What's your goal? Who's favorite? Right? No, it's this document. What's in the line? Yeah, no, right but I there. thought you had the, revi the revised physics. That's right there. Now that you said that, I remember that. I'm not thinking. It's okay. Being there to work is really It's okay. Yeah. And, and what's. Uh, sure. Uh, when Susan comes, though, uh, what you'll see is that. Um, Things that are red are the additions, yeah. and things that are crossed out are the old. So the first thing we have is page three. Yeah, unless, I don't think I really have a copy. No, oh, okay. I'm just passing it. Okay. Uh, actually, the very first thing is the very first thing. Because it's not, well, it's not as main as your plan. We didn't have, we didn't have our actual real name. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I have it. Great. And I do want to, uh, to mention, uh, to remind everybody, in order to make any changes to our bylaws, we do need a five, uh, at least five people voting for it, just a, a super majority. Okay, so uh, very first page, we're changing the name. Uh, we didn't have our, our, our official name in there, but I think that's pretty clear. So that doesn't need to be voted on? Let's go through and discuss it, and then okay. um, if anybody's got, you know, changes, we can make the changes, um, and then we can do enough of a vote on it. Okay. Um, on page three, um, I, and a lot of these are just a little bit of wording thing. Um, I had uh, added the next regular monthly meeting uh, in the month of May. I'm sorry, what was on page, page three? Okay, it's all in red, Carolyn. Anything that's new is in red. So right on page three, it says right there, B. Next regular monthly meeting. Uh, Are you not seeing it in red? E, and the judge is required for all meetings to get. I didn't get to that point yet. So B is what you're saying? Yeah, page B. is not you have a red? Next regular monthly meeting. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm looking at the first word. Yeah, no, okay. sorry. It's in the middle. I see things. Yeah, right. Anything that's new is going to be in red. Okay. Red. Do we have anybody that's colored one? <laughs> God, it's a little late to ask. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, maybe, you know, I don't want to, you know. I, I, My second. Sure. Right. So, uh, and then on E, letter E, uh, uh, an agenda is required for all meetings, right? Uh, order for business for regular uh, meetings. So I, I added may include, but not limited to. Because before, uh, it had said it shall be as follows. But very often, we change the agenda to accommodate what we were doing. So I, you know, I, I didn't think we wanted to limit it ourselves to an exact um, uh, I think, order. I think those are standard requirements. If you add other things, it's fine. I, I think there's a... There's protocol for a, an agenda. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's why we've maintained that. Um, are you saying you want to take some out? No. no. I'm saying oh. I changed the word for shall be 
to may include, but not limited to, the following items. Oh, because I see that everything crossed out, so I guess we were... Yes, but if you go to the next page... But on the next page... page right. right. Now, now we've got our agenda. So this is what we're normally doing, but we're not going to limit ourselves to this because there may be instances we want to do something different. So can we ask questions as we go through Absolutely. this? Absolutely. you want to wait until we're done? No, no, no. Or go ahead. Or, or does that... You want to do your thing? You want to do um, okay. No, and let's let this be a little bit more open. I, I, I was just going to say with the name of the... Main library building, it's all a piece instead of it doesn't have to be capitalized, it's so it's now it's going to be all a piece, right? Okay, so so I it's, think not when you have, it's, not it's not the name of the library, right? right. The main library, yeah. building. No, okay, right. that's why I was checking to see if that's what you meant by that, yes, mm -hmm. okay, yes, okay, so page four does have a lot of meat to it. Um, any other thoughts? I, I had a question. Yeah, absolutely. I can, so what's in the, the, the um, order that we're going to? And I, if I'm understanding this correctly, we're moving public comments further down, um, like after the trustees' reports, after the director's reports. Did, is there a reason we want to do that? Instead of leave them like up around rope right after rope call? Exactly. Or actually, it was right after, isn't it consent agenda? Although we don't have a, you know. Yeah, right. It's approval of. Well, we have the approval of minutes, right? Yes. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I guess what so, I'm no, saying. You're, you're, I think you're right, Taylor. You know, I sometimes think. people want to come. Yeah, and go no, 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 no. No. So we want the roll call. Actually, we don't have the approval of minutes in here, right? Yeah, oh, it's not further down. Yeah, these are not in order that we typically do it. Jennifer, can we look at that? They're just bulleted. They are just bulleted. My question is not order. Yeah, I was right. going to say my order. question is, okay. this is just what has to be You're on right. the agenda. You're right. You're right. This is, not, this is not the necessary order. These are just the items. So was anything eliminated? I don't believe. But, but, no, but it does say the order of business yeah. for regular meetings. In the heading for regular mm -hmm. meetings. That's what it yeah. says. It's the order All right. So. It the topics of business for regular meetings. Well, it went from an order right. to an unorder. You're right. You're right. Thank you. You're right. I don't want to stay. Well, I think that we need to stand here and order. All right. So, I think well, we can all, we can I can quickly put the order in right now. Okay. Uh, or like all the orders number one, pledge of allegiance number sure, sure. two. Uh, I don't know, roll call is number two. Um, <coughs> pledge is three. Pledge is three. No, according to here, the pledge is two according to this. Yeah, we might add our. Okay, well, yeah, roll call is three. Okay, who's going to say the Call to order and roll call are the same thing. Yes. Call to order is number one. And that's roll call. It's that's the roll call. Yeah, that's at the same time. Yes. Pledge of Allegiance is number two. Approval of minutes is number three. Uh, number four public is going to be public comments. Do you do a consent agenda? We generally don't. We tried for a while and then it didn't work out. It didn't work out really. It's fast. Okay. All right, so now we have trustee reports. Wait, what's number Which four? Which is seven. I'm looking at that. I'm sorry, 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 and then we can have our treasurer's report within that, president's report within that, 
Oh, within it. Oh, yes. gotcha. Okay. And so, Tim, you don't do any committee or liaison reports? Uh, that will be there if it if exists. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. We don't have a lot of committees uh, in this. So the treasurer's report comes right after trustees is put together? Treasurer's report will be a part of trustees. Why don't, why don't you just use the order of today's agenda with substituting uh, trustees' report for president's report and then that's the president's report and treasurer's report over that. And then that's the, all the same. Everything else is the same. Because there are a couple other things that got missed here and this is going to take a while yeah. otherwise. Yeah, and then according to this, the swear in well, that, that's a summer. Yeah, because that was a one time. Right. That's a one time. Right. Right. This is here. Yeah. That's my suggestion. Okay. Um, just as So, but then it goes. So then the next would be uh, director's report six, right? Uh, seven would be a contention agenda if we had it, but we don't. And then um, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Question: What is yes, Is an approval of bill right after the treasurer's? So wouldn't that be your number six, and then the director's report seven? Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, that's yeah. what I'm suggesting. Just so those are all yeah. here. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying, too. Yeah. You're better off just yeah. following yeah. the report. Okay. I apologize for this. This is why we have an open discussion. Um, uh, should we table in order to make those changes? Or are we okay with it? Uh, it's only taking on a minute. Okay. We've already postponed this for a month, and so I think we could take a few minutes and just get through okay. it. So then we'll just change this to follow the yes, current Yes, we're going to change yeah. it to follow mm -hmm. the current one. Mm -hmm. So the only content change really is just to add the, um, the trustee report in lieu of the president's report and then eliminate the committee and liaison reports until we get to F and then the, the treasurer report being part of the trustee report also. I don't know, Susan, should the treasurer's report be separate? Um, it's well, it's, I mean, possibly the payment of bills should be separate. Okay. Oh, for the payment of bills. Okay. <laughs> well, if we do it like like it is on here where you have a pay, yeah, it'll be. Still be yeah. Oh, gotcha. Then it's still recognizable. It's still okay, recognizable? Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Good point. Thank you. Right. Just like when we have rails and those different ones, we put up in BC, however many there are. Okay, should I run through what we decided? Yes. Okay. So we're all clear. Number one is call to order, and, and we're going to change that to slash roll call, because mm -hmm. that's come back, right? Call to order slash roll call. <clears throat> Number two is our Pledge of Allegiance. Mm -hmm. Number three is our approval of minutes. Mm -hmm. Number four is public comments. Mm -hmm. Number five is trustee reports. Mm -hmm. Number six <coughs> is our director's report. Um, don't we usually do the treasurer's report? I mean, the uh, payment of According to this, payment of bills is right. Not, uh, yeah. After the trustees' reports, then it should be treasurer's report and then the bills. Okay. That's how I understood. Alrighty. Are we making you more confused or frustrated? Not a, at all. This Great. is, glad you know, I, this is my bread and butter. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then this is pattern is four. Trustee reports is five. five. Treasurer's report is six. Is six. Payment of bills will be seven. Well, that falls under treasurer's report. Right. But we still need to list the right. Correct. Seven. And then director's report is eight. Right. Communications, nine. Yeah. And business, ten. Can I question something here? Absolutely. 
it was it not stated that the treasurer report was like a to be under trustee reports? Yes. Well, so I'm here. Today's a Tuesday. Trustee report. Today, yeah, but you can no, talk but about for the future. The and then trustee. B would be treasurer's report. And then after the treasurer report, you can put another number and it could be in the bill. So it's its own separate thing. Okay, so these reports. Yeah, but we're not yeah, listing it in this. In the bylaws is A, B, and C. Yeah. We're just listing what needs right. to be included. All right. Uh -huh. Is that right? Right. I mean, this doesn't have to have the order, and I don't think it needs to have the order. Personally, you just have your elements here, and you tell us what order you want, and then we'll put them whatever order you want. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, right. this is what's in it, not what order necessarily, which is okay with me. Okay. Well, then so. change where it says the order of business. And yes. Because it isn't the order of business. And he says? Letter E says the order of business for regular meetings. And? May include. So, but not limited to the following. Yes. Yes. So it still fits. Just yeah. yeah. so the agenda items may include, but not only two. Yeah. And it doesn't matter. Yep. Maybe agenda items. <laughs> Thank you. A regular board meeting. A regular meeting is included. Right? Right? Sorry. Yep. Yep. Yeah. All right. Okay. Back yes. in page three, letter E. We're changing the order of business to the agenda items for regular meetings may include, but not limited to the following. So that means we don't have to go and number them. So okay. Woo. Sorry. That's my, my, my mistake. Okay. So going on F on page four, um, uh, I, I, have the board may uh, may create special committees for the study on investigation of special problems, deal with special subjects. Uh, the president shall appoint members of such committees unless they are appointed by the vote of the board. Uh, we didn't have that before, but we can do that. Board shall continue such uh, committees when it deems appropriate to do so. Period. Because. We don't necessarily have to have the president appointing members. The board can do so if it wishes. So that was a, more of a clarification. Okay. Yep. How's it going to work? We're going to, we're going to decide if we have a special committee. And then we're going to say, who wants to be on the committee? There you go. And uh, Caroline says, I want to be on the committee. And Patty says, I want to be on the committee. And the board says, everybody is agreeing. And we all agree. And then that's that. So whoever wants to be on the committee, yeah, absolutely. On the committee. But if we don't agree, we then need to vote. So we we'll, we'll take a vote. Yeah. You we can disagree. We, we can vote. Or the president can decide. Aren't committees usually established by people who have an interest in that topic? Usually. That's usually how you separate it. You know, like when you have several. You together. would imagine that somebody who wants to be on the committee would have an interest in being on the okay. committee. Okay. <laughs> Why else would you want to be on the committee? Right. Right. Okay. Sure. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to figure out how that might play out. Isn't that how it's been done in the past? Days? No. No. It, historically, for, further back, it used to they used to all just be committees at the whole because yeah. they meet and decide things and then the board would overrule them. I anyway, remember so. being on, um, what was it, building and the ground? And there were like four of us, not the whole. So that's why I said, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know. I can understand where there would be topics that everybody felt it was necessary for them to be in on, but I don't know. Well, you know, this is not set in stone. If we feel later on that the bylaws need to be changed to accommodate other committee, uh, you know, dealings, we can make a change. You know, it's it's. This is not the Bible. So, 
So um, you're talking about put a line in there that um, the president selects the chairperson of the committee. Is the right now, yeah. if there's any mechanism for selecting the chair of the committee. Yeah, that, that's interesting. Uh -huh. All right, board may create special meetings. Um, uh, and then president shall select the chair and appoint members of the special committee. I'm sure you're not going to appoint somebody who doesn't have a chair on the committee. I would not want to do that. I wouldn't either. So that's what we're having. The president shall select the chair and appoint members. Good call here. Okay, we'll be on page five. So we've never had anything that specifically <coughs> said what our vote should be. Uh, and I have noticed that we had sh things like sure or things like go ahead or, you know, it, it's been a little loose. Yeah. And I just said, you know, we should vote yes, we should vote no is not in favor, abstain, uh, you're not going to, you know, you're not voting a positive or negative, uh, a pass, we have had people in pass, I just wanted to make sure that you're only passing once, we're not going to get into this weird loop where you're passing and I'm passing and then you're passing and I'm passing on it. So it's is only that one, one pass for the entire board or one well, per uh, person? One per person. Per person. One, One pass vote is allowed per, per member. Yeah. For what? Per meeting? No, per member. <coughs> On a vote. Okay. Per member on a vote. Yes. So, so I have a uh, concern about this. Sure. Uh, yes, in favor, no, in favor, that's fine. Pass, that's fine too. My, my concern is about abstain. Because I think that our rule is normally an abstain does not count as a vote well, in favor. It essentially counts as a no vote. Um, and this, right. this would sort of change that. Um, for instance, let's say we had a situation, this is just an example, where uh, there was a motion on the table to pass a need for expenditure. And two people voted yes. Four people really weren't sure about voting yet and abstained. Sort of extreme example, let's say four abstained and one person voted no. So you would have two yeses to one no, and it would still pass. It wouldn't be a majority. But I think that's what this is saying, though, because normally an abstention counts as a negative vote and under Robert's rules. So as it is now, that would not, it would not pass. But as I'm reading it now, it says only yes and no votes will be counted. So right. that would be two to one. And it would pass, even though two people, only two people had well, voted. It wouldn't, it wouldn't pass because it wouldn't be a majority. It's not a quorum. Not a quorum. Does it well, it is a quorum. Well, it's, it's not a majority. A quorum of people are sitting there. Seven. Um, but, but it's not a majority of But it's not even half of the people. It, but it says the only votes that count are yeses and noes, and you're not including the abstentions. Whereas in the rubber tools, an abstention well, we don't have to follow counts as a no. Because the bylaws supersede them. Right? How would you say right, that? What, I'm saying, what I think you're saying here is that two, that's going to pass. That's going to pass with a situation where it's just two yes votes. Um, How would you suggest changing that? I, I would say an abstain counts as a negative vote. Which well, is, why would somebody abstain? Why would they abstain? I don't know if they didn't have enough information. Yeah, but yet. Then, they're, then they're voting no. Then they're, they're, they're effectively voting yeah, no, but, but they're not coming abstain, out and saying no. What an abstain is, is saying, uh, you know, for whatever reason, let's say uh, we're voting on something that personally benefits me, but I'm going to abstain. That's not a no. Or, or if I morally object to, whatever reason I don't want to vote for this, I don't want to go to the public and say, I voted no for this. No, I abstain. I did not vote for this. Mm -hmm. I did not vote no. I did not vote yet. Yes, I did not vote no. I, I was out of this voting. That's the whole point of an abstain. Right. Right. But in this situation, it's got pass. This sample, this example that it gave. It, but I don't think it is because it's not a majority of the board. Yeah, but you're saying only yes and no votes will be counted as for against the question being voted on. Mm -hmm. So. So which, which is a deviation from what Robert's rule says. But, so that's a concern I have. That's a concern I have that that, yeah, that situation probably won't come up. Yes, but, but okay, A says four members of the board constitute a quorum. Um, right. 
Okay. Right, but that doesn't that doesn't mean that doesn't mean to do with voting. It means whether or not you can start the meeting, you have to have four people. Um, okay. Um, a majority of the votes of the members present and voting shall be necessary for passage of a member. A measure. It says right there, majority of the votes of the members yeah. present. So how, how do you reconcile it? Well, I think it looks like a conflict. It looks, to me, it looks like an internal conflict. Like, like. Wouldn't those be present uh, uh, help with that problem? So if somebody doesn't, it doesn't have a register to vote yes or no, they vote present. Or pass. You're in effect you know, abstaining as it's defined in your mind of not registering for or against. Um, I, it's I, the same I, issue. That I, I think that your question in life is, do you want to follow Robert's rules on this point? And if you do, then I have a parliamentarian friend that I could consult about this. If you just want to say we're going to do it our own way, then do it your own way. I, okay. What does everybody do? <laughs> what, what, what is the recommendation on the language change, Karen, for you to feel comfortable in this way? I, well, I would just not make any reference to abstaining. Uh, I would say abstaining counts as a negative vote. Um, I don't know. I would just I would look at Robert's language and hear it. Um, it. It's absolutely true that we don't have to follow Robert's rules and we can deviate from it. I'm just concerned about how a deviation might play out in the future and if that might cause problems. Um, you know, absolutely, we can decide not to follow it, but I just want to make sure we don't do something that causes a problem down the road. So, what's your recommendation? I would uh, say an abstention uh, is not a vote in favor of the motion, uh, or parrot whatever Robert's rule says. I would say in the absence of that an abstention, uh, it does not count as a vote in favor of the motion. It shouldn't count either way if you're abstaining or not. That's why it's right. It's like it's an out. It's it's a can't, it's a non-vote. Can I? Yeah. It Absolutely. Doesn't count it. My suggestion is: Why don't we go through everything else and? Take this and pass on this particular section until somebody comes up, like she said, she'll show it to her parliamentarian and get their view on it, and then we can go that. Mm -hmm. then, we can then we can go on and deal with the rest okay. of this. Since there's let's equal concern, yes, this let's is too concise. Yes, mm -hmm. let's go back to okay. it at another meeting. Let's All right. do everything yes. else. Okay. That is a good suggestion. Thank you for, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, all right. So we're putting a hold on that. So clearly we're not going to vote on this document tonight. Okay. Uh, since we're going to make uh, changes. So uh, next is uh, um, uh, the bottom of five uh, officers shall be elected by members present at the next regular meeting in the month of May. Uh, I, the, the word annual just, I don't know, that's seems like because we, we, we do vote in the next regular month meeting. And um, we could have more than one meeting in May. We could have special meetings for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I didn't want to say it's the regular meeting is when we're, we're voting for this. Uh, I have a question that says sure. hold office for a two year period. But yes. We voted again for Usually it's after every election, and every election is every two years. You know, when you're, because there's two year increments in between voting for board members. So we say uh, until the next biannual election? Or biannual, that would be a the Or something like that. Well, this is how it was worded before. I didn't make any change there. And I think you have somebody, if somebody fills a vacancy. Right. Big term. But okay, that's it. We're not getting there yet, Greg. Don't don't jump ahead. <laughs> no problems on this one, Greg. 
You're confused so, because so, so you hold the office for two years. Two officers two right. years in a row. Mm -hmm. We can't. Yeah, there's nothing to say we can't. You can't hold the office more than once for a two year period. Okay, that's what you're trying to say. Right. Right. It's not saying you. It's saying you're going to hold the office. Okay, so I was the treasurer for two years, right? And then I was the treasurer again for two years. Each one was a separate two-year period of holding okay. the position. Okay. And then we had another election, and then I was chosen to be the second treasurer again. It's, it starts another cycle. Okay. Every two years, it starts that cycle mm -hmm. of holding an office. Okay, Correct. Right. Yes. So I have a question. Um, and the rules is written do not deal with this scenario at all regarding the vacancy. And so this is a question that you might want to address. Um, can a board member hold more than one office? Let's say, let's just say you were to That's true. resign partway through. I'm no thinking about it. Let's say you were to resign, and Petty would just say, uh, you know, or someone would nominate Petty to be president. But she's already the treasurer. Can she be the treasurer? That is true. President That's a good at question. the same time? Or how does that work? Uh, I don't know. That was never I, addressed. I in personally, this. I know, it yeah. was not. It was right. not. I personally don't think that's necessarily a good thing. Well, yeah, I, I think it probably is uh, a good thing to have different people holding the office. Um, and I think if, let's say, <coughs> an elected president, she should probably not hold the office of treasurer, too. I agree with that. Yeah. But let's say this. Penny doesn't think she ever wants to be president. Yeah. So, so we don't have to worry about So you want to put a sentence in there <laughs> saying, um, no. Uh, a member shall only hold one office at a time. At any given time. Yeah, right. At any given time, I said it's perfect. Right, at the end of the day, a trustee uh, may only hold one office at any given time. Okay, you like that? That's delightful. Great. Okay, B. In the case of a vacancy in one of the offices we just had, uh, in, not, no, in the case of vacancy in one of the offices, uh, the board shall elect a trustee to temporarily fill the office vacancy. The board shall elect an officer to permanently fill the vacancy for the unexpired term when all trustee vacancies have been filled. So this is the case where um, I, I resign and I'm the president and then you elect someone to hold the office of the president until we get a full complement of seven trustees. And at that time, you make a permanent decision to hold the fill that position. Because now you're getting a new member. Are you threatening us? I'm, 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 not. I'm not. I'm thinking but ahead. In that case, wouldn't the vice president just become the president? Yeah. Yes, I would okay. think so. All right, let's say the treasurer <laughs> resigns. The treasurer resigns, and we, we fill the position of the treasurer temporarily until we have a full complement of the trustees. And then at that time, we decide to fill it permanently. Could be the same person. Or we could get somebody on the board who's, you know, an accountant to that's the way to do it. Yes, right. And that's delightful. Right. Okay. Great. I'm glad you're happy. Um, anything on these other ones? Very little now. Very minor. Okay. Sure. okay. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Are we changing library director to executive director? No. Do we say yes. consistency? I mean, yes, it has to be yeah, we exact yeah, title. That's her title. Executive, executive director. director. Thank okay. you, Craig. Then there's a number of places that will be. 
So then it has to be changed. Yeah. Yeah, we'll change it everywhere it exists. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Any time. Executive, there are a lot of them. But you know you do a fine anyway. Well, you could just say director, director. Yeah, because then on the next page it also says no, library. We're going to make a change everywhere it says library director to executive director. Okay, it's the top of the page. Yes. The page. And we'll do that because she likes it. Okay. All right, so those are the word government of their government. That didn't make any sense. Governance of the library. And so that's that word. Okay, so this big thing in the page of, in page seven. So we've got this our biannual statement of policy that we did, we did talk about one of the previous meetings. Um, uh, read through. Okay, the, the lined out paragraph is what they had before. You don't have to necessarily read it, but the next paragraph is. It, I, I, I made an attempt to write it so it made more sense as to what we were actually doing because it didn't. It didn't. The upper one really didn't address what we were doing, in my opinion. Can I ask a question? Absolutely. Is, is, is it the first time you do this? Correct. Yes. And is this um, new rewording pretty much still from? I have a question on page seven. Are we moving on? We are not. We are looking at that paragraph and waiting until everybody reads it. Oh. And until okay. everybody says yes or no. Yes. Okay. I would Brian, Karen? Yep. Yeah, okay. And the, okay, <coughs> Carolyn, what? We're talking about annual par paragraph, right? Mm -hmm. We're done with that? Or am I moving on too fast? Yes, it's not. Oh, it's fine. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry, okay. sorry. No, 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 fine. So the bottom, uh, we have, we're changing the 20,000 to 25,000. And apparently that's a uh, an Illinois. Uh, it's it's the amount has changed for the Illinois. Well, I have just one question. Sure. So sealed bids are required for twenty five thousand. Are any bids required for twenty thousand? A sealed bid is when it's closed and then you have an opening day. But do we expect to get? How do we expect to spend something that costs twenty thousand dollars? What's going to be the process? It, it's the same as it currently is for spending nineteen thousand dollars now. Which is, if the board wants us to go for bid, we will. But that, that this is to get <coughs> compliance with the state law, which is anything over twenty-five thousand has to go to bid to seal bid. I can't spend nineteen or or twenty thousand dollars without board approval. So if the board said they wanted bids, we'd be getting bids. Okay, so. Yeah, we're doing. Okay. I mean, I mean, I would think so because it's, you know, mm -hmm. it's five grand. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. That that makes sense. Then. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next. Page eight. Um, so this was just a just a little um, uh, repositioning uh, changes by laws. <coughs> on um, the regular meeting board with five or more trustees voting in favor of the changes. How was it before? I thought it uh, was a majority of the, of the trustees before. I think it was put. Or was Ford considered a, a majority? It was in a different position, and it seemed like it should be under our amendments. OK, that makes sense. Because I thought we had voted on the number of yeah, we trustees did. Right. before. Right. We did. Right. right. Yes. This, this is not. It didn't change the wording. It, it, it wording just moved it to another correct. location. Yes. Fine with me. So, any more comments on what's there? Did was this changed also the the, the fiscal year? Because yes, it was been. changed position again. Okay. 
it, it was see it's lined out on the bottom and I just put that on top. It just seems to fill a little bit better. Okay, this makes sense. Yes. Okay. Double page makes sense to me. All right, so we will make the changes that we discussed. We will Are we going to say I did for changes in here? Yes. Everything yes. else is? Yes, everything else is fine. Oh, okay, um, and Diane will make those changes. We will bring the changed copy to our next meeting where we will have them uh, presented to everyone for another look through. We can have another demo, we can have a vote on it. Okay. Yes, this was only the bylaws. Okay. Okay. So now we're going through. Uh, uh, so the whole, this is my document, so everything is my document, so there's no, no red lines on this at all. Um, and I'm proposing, uh, because we've never really had a, a board procedures document, and as uh, I just thought it would be good for us to have something that just went through and, and said what we do at our board meetings, and how we do it so that it's it's just clear. And if we have any conflicts, we can refer to a document that says this is what we're doing. But it's just my intent. So what are we so, looking at? What's the title of the, It's called Niles Main District Library Trustee it's Manual. In it's in your binder. Oh, it's in the binder. It's in the binder. It's the next document in the binder. Yeah, I'm thinking it's the second. No, no. So, Hopefully everybody's read through it with a fine tooth comb. Yeah. And uh, I don't use combs anymore. You don't use combs any longer. Okay. So some sort of a brush. <laughs> okay. I just have to figure out where that page is. Okay. Keep going. Right, right after the violence. Keep going. I'm going. I'm going. All right. I'm going. I'm going. <coughs> Board meeting. Protocol. I think he just passed it. Okay, so we one. Okay, here we go. Great. Page one. Page one. Thank you. So, so I gave this to you a couple of months ago, and I was hoping that we would have reviewed it in that time. Yep, um, I just have something to Absolutely. Thank, Thank you, Karen. Some of these uh, things that are in here uh, are sort of duplicative of what are in the bylaws, for instance, uh -huh. the agenda. Right. The order, which we just talked about, and the changes to Correct. So, I, I mean, I don't know that we need to have this in here since it's in the bylaws. So, I, you know, I don't know that we also need it here, but if we do have it here, it should it needs parallel, to parallel in the Correct. bylaws or, Correct. or just take it out. Correct. And for example, under voting, we had that discussion about right. abstaining. Right. So, so and so we decided. What's going right. on with that? That shouldn't be voted So on. I tell you what, uh, board meetings, uh, agenda, agenda is required for all meetings, trustees who wish to place. So I, I think we need the wording there about how to place an item on agenda because we have had questions about that. Uh, okay. How does that happen? Uh, should contact the board president or library director at least one week before the meeting. Uh, director should care to Okay. So why don't we take out then? From the order of business and take the whole yeah the whole all the way down to voting procedures before voting procedures right because that's covered in our our um, bylaws. Okay. So limiting voting procedures. Uh, yeah. On page one, down here. No. Page one. Yeah, before voting procedures. Where it says. The order of business. Oh, I see it. Okay, yes. Thank you. Starting with the order of business. Starting with the order of yeah. business going down to number 15, adjourned. Okay. And then right. we just put a big X all the right. way to just, just a big, if you got a red pen, just do it because it'll feel good. Unfortunately, I just did it. Okay, so voting procedures. Uh, so, we had talked about this. A motion is made by a trustee. If no motion is made, no further action will be taken. So, that's our normal. Mm -hmm. um, Motion will be seconded. If no second is made, then no further action will be taken. That's, that's a normal thing. Uh, all trustees will be given an order to comment, beginning with the trustee who made the motion following around the table. So that was why I've been trying to do, but now it's in our in our procedures, you know, unless anybody has a real problem with that. Um, 
So uh, now we've got a, a, a time in it, you know. Um, we don't want somebody to just keep going on, you know, for half an hour. Fill it, we don't want to filibuster, right? Exactly. We don't want to filibuster. Um, however, number six, we can change the amount of time granted and, and it may be an open discussion. So, so let's give ourselves leeway to make changes as, as it goes along. Now, number seven, this is, this is an important one. And this is myself included. We have made statements as we vote. You know, we've gone around and we've had all our discussions. And then it comes time to vote, and then we make another statement. And I and I have actually rethought my vote based on what somebody is now saying after I vote, but before they vote. And that's wrong. We should tell everything we feel about a particular item completely. We're done. We're, we're done discussing it so that all the members have all the information and all the opinions of all the other members. Now let's just vote and let's just say no, yes, abstain, pass, you know, we're done, that's it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I feel passionate about this. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so, what do we think? We okay with that? What I just said! <laughs> With that? Yes, that particular thing. Well, how do you fit in trustees? We'll have one more opportunity to comment in the same manner. Before the rumors. Right? But this is once the vote is called. Yeah, this is once the vote is called. Once the vote is called. We're done discussing now. Diane is making the call for a vote. And that's it. We're done. So if they're getting ready to call, we have something else to say. Wait! Well, yeah, yeah, if you have something else to say, then wait, you know. So that way, okay, we don't, don't hear everything before we decide right. on our voting. Yes. Which makes sense. I think so. All right, so then we'll change the voting roll call to match what we said in our uh, bylaws. So wait, let's start well, the voting procedure. Oh, I'm sorry, okay, sorry. Uh, this would, uh, you know, make uh, our meetings much more structured. Yes. I, I don't, you know, I, I know now a lot of people like, to just sort of ask questions informally, Correct. especially when someone's on a particular topic. I don't know if you're going to have done that or how you feel about that. Well, I, I think we should go in an orderly fashion. Okay. Well, this also imposes a new responsibility on Diane. She's going to have to time everyone every time um, and start talking. Uh, and that's, that's an additional thing that she would have to do. That is too. true. Um, do we want to phrase it differently? I mean, uh, how, just, how about trustees will have a uh, limited amount of time? Or how, 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 how do we address a trustee coming in and just wanting to talk for a half an hour? Because they just won't stop talking. What, what do we do? And, and I'm saying none of us will do it, but you never know. I mean, you never know. Are you saying speaking irrelevantly or speaking at the top of your on the topic, but just just going on and on and on and on and on and on. We, we, we certainly can can set up the system, but you would have to acknowledge it would be a change, and it would be and really more of a duty for should we say should we say approximately three minutes? Should we say approximately mm -hmm. five? Should we should we run it a little bit different? Yeah. So I don't, I, 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 think, I, don't think. I think approximately makes sense, but I think what you need to realize, we're trustees, you can't just cut someone at the knees when we're discussing a lot of the issues that are relevant to our library. And to think that Diane's going to start using an egg timer yeah, every time okay. you talk, it's, you know, and then... Yeah, no, I agree, I agree. And, and you, can, you can say... You know, respectfully, can you try to like concisely finish your point? But you know, this uh, this bit about like cutting people at the knees is well, I don't want to do that. No, 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 but it will. It will if this yeah. she's stuck yeah, with okay. the right. timer. Right. Right. Somebody's yelling. Right. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. 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 And and if we're doing this and we're trying to keep it kind of more relaxed, like we have been. Like you say, if somebody brings up something and you have a question pertaining to it, 
and you've already spoken. Uh, because we went in order, I can't ask her a question, or I can't ask the question that I thought of after okay. she came Well, you shouldn't interrupt me. No, I'm not right. saying you know that. I mean? I'm Let not me saying finish. That. Yes. I'm not okay. saying that. But listening to you, and you came up with something like, oh, I didn't think of that. I agree. I agree. I should be able to have the right to ask another question. Absolutely. Right. right. So and then you just put your, your hand, hand on yes. and, yeah. then, and then they'll come back to you. I think <coughs> it's your responsibility as president to suggest to this person who's going on and on and on and on to say something to them. Okay. And, and um, perhaps you would see us all nodding yes. <laughs> so we're pretty clear that we want to take out number four. Yeah. To, to put a time uh, limit in, yeah. Okay. Do we like that we go in an orderly fashion? Sure. I personally think it works nice. Right. Yeah. It's been going well since you started it. Great. Okay. Yes. I think the standard that I've seen used from time to time is if, if there's new relevant information, it's always something. Um, but if the um, uh, if the uh, comments or discussion starts to get repetitive, you know, uh, that at that point there's no new information to uh, to present. Uh, so I think that at that point, it, you know, it would be up to you sure. to determine whether or not that was any uh, that was relevant any longer to the to the discussion. Sure. So I think that's what you want to prevent. That's what I'm trying to do. Right. The repetition. Right. Right. You know, I really think we ought to. Come on, guys. I think we ought to. And I mean, whatever the reasons are, maybe it's the same reason. Maybe, you know. So my question to that is, are you saying that should be worded in here versus this three-minute rule? That's what I'm suggesting. Sure. You know, this, to establish a standard. I mean, if, if there's new information, that's great. I think new information yes. should always be brought to the table. Definitely. As long as it's you know, as long as long as it's relevant to the conversation. So, how would you uh, describe that to president? And, and I'm not, it's just not me. I mean, it's going forward. Anybody who's going to have the president position. Yeah. Well, these are your these are your rules. It's my dis my recommendation. Yeah, well, but so I mean, it's the way that you went right to run. So <coughs> this is a document going forward for the, the board for the future. Right. It's not just. Tim Spinoni's, you know. It doesn't say Tim Spinoni's. Tim's procedures. <laughs> well, um, I believe when a person speaks and it's their turn, I mean, I always look at it basically as like the four elements after, after we're talking here. Um, you want to present your facts. You want to be concise. Um, also, I guess, slash to the point, I guess concise and to the point is the same, and I like the new information. So I think it has to be that and keep all the fluff out of it, you know, and just state your opinion and then let the next person go, you know, I mean, so however you want to put that, as long as you're not just... Each trustee should make an effort to right. respond right. in a concise, relevant, you know, like exactly. type of manner. You know, so that, and that should be our, you know, our yeah. standard. Right. That should be our standard. I, I agree. I think that's a reasonable thing to put in versus the three minute limit. Yeah. And then the next round should be questioning, adding information. Um, or or responding mm -hmm. to yep. you heard. what has already right. happened. Yes. So right. essentially replacing number four with wording that you just suggested. Yeah. But we'll I mean, have to reword it. Because I mean, so. that is, I believe, what we've, you know, I know right. when I was president too, that's what, you know, we were going after. And then when something became repetitive, we'd be like, okay, that was already said, we're right. moving on. You know, so we should try to be cognizant of that ourselves mm -hmm. and not have that happen. So should I have another right. statement that says the president may ask a trustee to uh, wrap up or, or to complete their their comments if it's becoming repetitive? Well, that should be 
be your role, isn't it? I mean, yeah, you can just say this. I mean, it's already been, it's okay. already, it's already been stated. Okay. Okay. Great. Yeah. I mean, I think so. All right. Yeah, that is, because you, you're the person who moves the meeting. Okay. And yeah. this voting part is according to what we're doing for the other thing. Other thing. Correct. So that we can circle for a for later vote? Correct. Thank you. Um, so on the bottom, on the top of page three, though, second paragraph, I did say at the discretion of the presiding officer, an inviting binding vote may be called for by show of hands, because we do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, we read through the next page a little bit. I think number three is very important and something that we don't do. Yep. Yep. Well, we've started, you know, no, we started, so that's good. Yeah. So does everybody agree with number three, too? Can we go ahead with that statement? Before we start speaking, address the presiding officer and not proceed until you're recognized and named. Well, I think I we I Isn't it not be part of the hand and right? Yes. But that's now that so that would not be okay. No, so well, you would have to. I know. I know. Well, it, right? do we, I don't necessarily right. want to make it that. I know. Procedural. I mean, the hand. Generally, right. now what we've been doing is, is, is we don't raising hands. We don't raise our hands. We go around the table. Right? We yeah. go around the table, but then when it becomes a more of an open discussion, well, then, you raise then you're like, raise yeah, and you're being recognized, right? I'm saying, like, Caroline, yes. You're right. <laughs> See? <laughs> so that is just addressing that. It doesn't necessarily have to be. Okay. So it's not like we're doing anything different than no, what we're doing. No, than what we've been trying to do now. Presiding officer is putting the question. What does that uh, mean? That what means is, when we're discussing the question. Like when when the, the we're going in order of our, our, our agenda right. the next question comes up, is that what you're referring yeah. to? I think I took that from the uh, village. Yeah. yeah. I would have thought that was more to do with uh, the vote. You know, I think you're right. That's what we're calling the vote. Yes, you're absolutely right. Or who that's when calling it. Maybe I should change that's it. Like yes. Right. Okay. Could you please? Yes. It's, it's, so two, it's calling so, for a vote, right? So when the proceeding is calling for a vote versus yeah. putting forth a question? Yeah. Yes, because you know, you can leave the room if we're discussing something. But when we're calling for a vote, let's not leave. So when the presiding officer has called for a vote, right? Yes, call. Right. Okay. Yes, call. All right. All right, so we want to limit, you know, private discussions. I think I've ever heard this board this quiet. Can you hear quiet? Number five. Okay. What in the heck? Explain yourself. All right. So let's say uh, I take, I have medication. I'm on medication. 
Okay. That should be. Uh, and I go out for a couple of drinks and I come in and I am unhinged. Okay. What do we do? Okay. Okay. That's what we do. We say, so you're just asking them for that particular meeting? Yes. Um, yes. Do, you, do you think it might be to your best interest? Yes. If you we, yes. That's reasonable. Not that I would hope anybody would cause that issue, but... But, I mean... Yeah. Certainly. You know. mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like a big and yeah, Would that be someone term. swearing at someone or something? Yeah. Well, that disrupts yeah. the meeting. It's got to be something extreme. That's got to be something extreme. I actually want to see the respect. I feel like I should ask Jen's boss about okay. that one. So I'm not sure that the trustee should make that a trustee lead. Okay, well, sir, <laughs> seriously, you can't vote them off the board. No, no, no definitely no. can't. No, yeah, that mind is feeling a little. That one, about feeling something. that one that makes sense to question the lawyer about to make sure we're not doing something that's uh, <laughs> well. And if you have people that are you know not getting along or something, and there's a lot of, I mean, I've been in board meetings where people have screamed and yelled at each other across the table, and you know, is that disorderly conduct? And can mm -hmm. Then who decides? Does the president decide? No, it's that, the way I've had ordered that majority vote of the board. But who calls and says, okay, this is so far out of hand, well, we have to make a vote to say that we're going to get rid of this. Someone could make person. a motion to that. And would you get rid of the one or both of them? Right. Well, well you, you would be deciding. So it's yeah. kind of... This is an extreme situation. Yeah. It's never yeah, but it's, it it's probably never going to happen. I just... I was just reading through our, our bylaws and there was nothing to say. What do we do if we have this situation? Yes, Carol. I think uh, what worked once before was when when things got heated, the president called for like a recess, which I think helped just kind of calm sure. things down. Mm -hmm. I'm not so sure how much we want to have on the video, although I think we have to take actions when necessary. You know what I mean? I don't. You know, the situation would be bad enough, and then all of a sudden the board decided, you know, then what we say or how we vote will be all over the world, and, and maybe that's not handling it properly. I don't know. I think the, the first thing I would suggest is that I think you should have rules in place that you have control. I think it was a very good um, decision on, on, on Karen Stark at some <coughs> when she called for a recess. I kind of kind of got everyone to calm down. So, I mean, it's just a thought. I mean, I, this, I'm worried about how this... Well, how this is just a suggestion. To I, me, calling recess, it would be your first thing. And secondly, as far as this voting, would this be something that you would consider you would have to do in closed session? Because you don't want it on there, or because it's in a already no, no, it's an open meeting, you think you don't want it on there? I don't know. I'm just asking because I don't yeah. know. I don't yeah. know. It seems no. I, it just sounds kind of. I'm not sure what to do. With okay. This. Yeah. I, I'm not married to this. I'm, I, this is just something that I wanted to consider. Okay. It's been considered. Uh, well, I said just define it. Okay, folks. So just define. Disorderly conduct with the situation. Yes. Okay. So that it couldn't just be willy nilly. Well, that's good. That's but I don't know. But I wouldn't want to get the lawyer involved. I don't want to spend that money. No. I yeah. You want to say that? Yeah. Just eliminate it. I think that's a great idea. Let's do it. Let's Okay. So, are we, uh, <coughs> we're not happy with, uh, Number five. We yes. want to take number five. Off. Thank you. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Diane, we can eliminate number, number five. five. Carolyn, you okay with eliminate number sure. five? Everybody seems to be okay with it. Yeah. Number five is out. Yeah. And we will be big ourselves. Ah. And we will so do what we. Do. How about that number six? Leaving that in. If we've got somebody that comes in who's just, you know. Disrupting the entire meeting, I won't leave. I think we should be able to control our meeting. Right? Uh, are you talking about 
a patron, somebody anybody. who just, or anybody. Yeah. Somebody who thinks it's guts. You know, waving a flag around, standing on terrorism, throwing water. What's a library? I don't know. I mean, we're part of the library. Uh, seriously, on this, um, is this getting us into the same problem as the public orders? I don't think so, because the, the other people are not elected officials. And I just don't think you can make an elected official leave the room. But observers, let's say Victoria goes crazy over there. Yeah. <laughs> because she can? She's not a mess. She's not a mess. I think there's a important difference here because uh, board members have the right to vote on that, Correct. and I realize they might be at hand, whereas members of the public can still watch the whole meeting on the video, even if they have a sure. guest to leave the room at a certain point. <coughs> I think there's a difference there. Okay. So we're leaving number six in, but it is actually becoming number five because we haven't written on four. Great. One more page. Okay. So we want to make sure number number six there are communications. We just want to make sure that we're always dealing with the director and not going straight. Director anymore. Executive, the executive director. Executive director. So even if there is, say, a, fin a financial question or something that would be best answered by the business manager, would you would prefer to go to the director and ask the director to have the business manager contact the trustee? That sounds good. That being said, the treasurer does have a special relationship with the <laughs> finance director, so, but we don't have to necessarily. Thank you for that question. Okay. Okay, last bullet point, the executive director. Okay. And that's our standard. We just want to make sure we're Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Uh, there are actually not as many uh, changes to this as the rest of the bylaws, actually, which I think would be a completely change. Are we okay with as amended? Uh, do we want to vote on it as amended, or do we want to see the copy that we we change and bring it up at the next meeting? Can we vote on it after we see the copy. Yeah. 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 Okay. I think also oh, yeah. okay. we need to vote on the vote. On the yeah. I'm opposing clarification about Correct. Yes. or yep. Yep. Okay, very good. Well, thank you all. Uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, Can I say thank you, Tim, because obviously you put a lot of work in it. Yes. Oh, well, yes. you're very welcome. Yes. Thank you. Just, uh, and I, I think really our bylaws do need some at least housekeeping cleaning up during that month. And uh, I think this will be a good Okay, are we going to 11 now? Or? Uh, we are, uh, yes, right, we're done with that. Right. Well, no, we're on 10C. 10C. Uh, oh, tracking passport. Yeah. Yes. Okay, cause so uh, Carolyn had asked uh, at our last meeting to uh, have a discussion on tracking change uh, costs for um, Passport costs, uh, Greg had, had stated and, and uh, uh, has, has pretty much <coughs> come to the conclusion that it cost about $5, roughly $5 in uh, library time in general to um, process a passport. So uh, Carolyn, do you want to talk more about that issue? Well, um, are we, is the purpose of this discussion to explain how we can track passport costs or are we deciding we don't, we can't? Well, the purpose is uh, for you to explain uh, why mm -hmm. and how 
and for the board to then decide whether or not the you know we want to implement that sort of a, a change. We should track the costs associated with offering the passport services period because okay. it's, it's a service we offer and we definitely bring in revenue but there are costs associated with it and I believe there are ways that you can track the costs simply without needing some software or something so over the top um, for example, we just learned that um, our staff wasn't aware that there's a charge by the bank for every check we deposit. So now we have this additional cost for all the checks that are being deposited, which is also hitting the cost, which is also a deduction from the cost of um, the passports. And um, I, I, I don't know the exact process you're following. I've been in the library. I've seen where people sign in and a few things that you do but I think like anything else we should be able to um, come up with a process where we can um, actually itemize you know what it costs us to to provide any service and to track staff's time doesn't necessarily need um, your um, your time stamp system. I mean, I don't expect someone to run upstairs and clock in and out, but you certainly should be able to um, monitor, have records that you keep. I mean, we've done it uh, in schools for numerous events and projects, and, and it, it is feasible. So I'm just trying to figure out if you think it's impossible or if you have an idea. Because when I say you, who are you talking to? This, the library. Thank you. So does the I'm library and saying you and I'm like, no, oh, yeah, no, because when I was put on the board, I'm thinking, does the library have a process in place um, for um, you know any of their um, different services? What I wrote here was, um, let's see, I had some notes. Actually, it was a simple little statement about. Um, at least I thought I had it. Oh, here. Um, I would think that um, we should be able to itemize, we should expect itemized documented process for our library operations. And I think that's something that we should try to, to create. Um, for the numerous operations in the library, we should be able to account for whatever costs are incurred, and that's time as well as charges for anything um, and I think it's something we can do um, do we not have any kind of system in place for itemizing or itemizing or documenting a process I mean when you give it when you give staff tasks isn't there some type of you know um, itemization that goes down how do you how do you realize accurately what the cost you're incurring to provide any kind of service. I mean, I'm very familiar with doing that, and I'm just wondering why it seems we're unable to do that here. So I'm not understanding why there's even difficulty trying to create a process. May I? Yeah, so though you are uh, expanding your, your discussion larger than passports. No, pa the passport agency is a process. And I'm saying with all the processes in the library, we do a million things. You should be able to itemize the passport agency's costs, staffing, and whatever else is involved, just like any other process in the library. You know, I would like to think we don't, we, we, we must be documenting costs for everything else we do. So let's let Karen ask uh, Susan. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, let's let Susan. Yeah, I, I was just, you know, wondering particularly why passports were being singled out as something that should be tracked financially when the library provides, as you mentioned, dozens and dozens of services and there's a return on investment of tracking and itemizing. What is the cost of people actually itemizing and tracking? You know, we're here in the library to provide services for individuals and the outcome of the service is has a value also other than just a cost. 
I just got a passport today. It took 15 minutes. I'm sure my $35 fee far exceeded the amount of cost, whatever it was. So this is a, a cash cow for the library to be questioning it seems um, a place that doesn't make any sense to me personally. Can I respond? Um, accountability for any service isn't a waste of time. Um, if in fact whoever handled your passport would have your name, it took 15 minutes, there's a charge for the check you wrote her, there's a charge for I guess some processing that has to be mailed, but so difficult. But the real issue is we keep talking about the revenues we're generating and we forget the revenues we're generating come at a cost. So let's accurately depict our revenues by subtracting the costs that are involved to provide this service. It's, it's standard everywhere else, but apparently not in the library. But that was my reason. Sure. So the problem with trying to track staff time and the cost of staff time is that many people in the library earn different rates. So there isn't a good way of doing that without a software tracking tool to be able to do it, which would be putting us on a par with a kind of organization that does billable hours. And we, as Sue says, we have many, many services. This is the only one that actually brings us in money. And we don't ever say, hey, we earned $57,000 free and clear with passports. It just is on the revenue line as revenue because it's revenue. We, we can't say it's revenue except for this. That's how the budget, the, uh, the accounting works. So if the board decided that they really, really wanted to monitor how staff was spending their time, what they were doing, and how much different services cost, we could do that. It would be very expensive. It would be even more distracting. I would be really opposed to it, but if you thought there was a truly compelling reason to do it, by all means tell us to do it. But it would be very expensive. But for me to do a passport would cost a lot different than for Albert, who did Sue's passport to do it, and you would need to take that into account. So, and, and the cost of everything that we do, everything has a cost. And that would be get very, very complicated. And I just don't see what the to what end. Can I just share with you what I know? Uh, actually, Carolyn, let's, okay. let's go around this thing now. So well, then how do so I respond to Susan Wayne until everyone else is done? Because I have something yeah. I want to say on this, too, and other people are crazy. Not a problem. Great. Mm -hmm. So uh, Greg has given us a rough idea that it costs about $5 per passport to uh, generate that passport. And uh, I don't have an issue with every time we see the line item for how many passports did we do this month, we see that we've created uh, 100 passports. Clearly, it costs us $500. So if we bring in $3,500, because 35 uh, times 100 um, for each passport, you can subtract that 500 and say, okay, we made $3,000 on it. There's there's a difference between revenue and uh, net, you know, net revenue. So. Um, I don't have, my personal vote on this is I don't have an issue with a rough estimate of how much it costs per passport to produce if anybody's concerned about that. Here. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, um, I, we do make some revenue off the passports. It's not a huge percentage of the revenue we come in that we bring in. It's just really a little extra money. I don't really care exactly how much money we're taking in as long as we're not losing money on this project, which we're definitely not. We're making some money, which is good. And um, again, it's never going to be a major component of our funding. It's just a little extra revenue we're bringing in, which is which is great. And uh, it doesn't cost our staff that much time, so that it's a net loser. Uh, that's very clear. And I don't really think it makes sense to spend a lot of time and energy figuring out exactly how much money we're making in passports when it's not. It's really a very small percentage of our income and our expenses. It's, it's never going to be a huge amount. So I, I don't think it's worth spending more time and effort to figure out exactly what the down amount is. Yeah. Um, in the past, we were the first phone company, we had to itemize everything we did, how much time we spent in the bathroom, how much time we spend on the phone talking to a customer, how much time, the amount of time it took us to write that down, are we going to charge how much time it takes us to write this down? 
It's kind of ridiculous the stuff we had to track. And seriously, it detracted from us doing the job properly. Thank um, I think we have to think of what our goal is. A library, we are a service to the community. Um, it's very clear that this operation does not cost us a lot of money. We actually bring in a little bit. And I don't agree with tracking every single minute that somebody works. And, I mean, I'm going to piggyback on everything every else said. Um, I agree, too, that this is a service that we all decided to pursue and kind of look at and see if we were going to make money on it. And we are. And I think that was one of our original goals with it. Um, but personally, when I came in, and I mean, so this is just my little story, when I came in and got my passport just um, in May, um, actually, I had seen people in here that I knew that lived in Park Ridge that I know from the community, and they came, the first time they visited our library in Niles. And so this also is building community, bringing in different people, having seeing our library, they're like, oh my gosh, this is so good. I mean, it was so nice. And so for that aspect, that's just a little, that's just a little lens that I got to see that day and see what Passports was actually doing and people knowing that it was here and I'm like, how did you find out about it? You know, so just build this thing. So again, building community, giving the service, making the money. Um, I'm thankful for the amount of money that you put down. I think that's a good investment, the 10,000 with adding the postage, everything. Um, I'm fine with that much. I understand what you're talking about, but I think that this right here is just not the place where we should be focusing our time. That's my point. Uh, well, um, I, I in no way meant we should be tracking every minute, and going to the bathroom is definitely not what my point was here. But I realize we have a process in place already. Um, and what I'm saying is every passport is in 15 minutes. And there are a lot of, I think, passport processes that we don't get paid for. All I'm saying is whoever is working on this, I mean, I'm familiar with having logs of, you have to have a customer or a person come in. They have a name and how much time it's spent and who that employee was. I don't know what 15 minutes of salary is, but I, it, it's something that would take a minute just to jot down so we could say that we really are being accountable for what we're doing because everything isn't 15 minutes. Everything isn't concise. It's just my suggestion because it's not as complicated to record um, the steps or the process as it sounds to everyone here. Maybe it's because I've done it before. But um, I just think it would be some way to figure out actually what our, what, what our actual costs are. So that's why I brought it up because we can't very well say our revenues are 100% from the passport agency because they really aren't. And that's how we continue to report them. So that's why I thought we would come up with a process. But I understand what each and every one of you are saying. And Linda, totally agree with you. This is ideal for um, just getting this library on the map and the community, rec the, the whole community recognizing what, why we're here. Mm -hmm. But that was my point. I feel like you may be confusing revenue with profit. Revenue is the money that you take in, and expenses is the money that you, that you send out. We track those expenses in this library because there is a supply budget line, there's you know postage budget lines, those are all tracked. So we know how much we're spending. Are, are they itemized down to the particular individual process or service? That would be, as was already indicated by a number of people, kind of a nightmarish process. But I think, just like we say, here's the revenue that we get from property taxes or fines, you know, but you know, what did it cost to you know, have to replace the book and things? We don't track each individual 
you know, what really did we get from that fine, you know, because there was a cost involved to it. That's the, the offering of passports in libraries is a service to the community. We're open at times when other people, any other government agency, post offices, other places that, that provide passports, they're not. So we can get people to come into our building and take a look at all that we have to offer because they're coming here for that one service. They're coming here for a notary. They're coming here for test proctoring. They're coming here for a story time. And then they see all of the other things that we have. And we already took a look at, you know, the visiting the, the visitors coming to the library. We want to make sure that that doesn't continue to, you know, slide down. So we want to continue to keep offering things that bring people here, and they, then we can showcase all the other things. Is, is how I think. All right. I, I think um, we. Uh, I don't think we even need to take a vote on it. Okay. So thank you, Carolyn, for bringing that up. Appreciate that. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, I need to take a break. Okay. We need to take a quick break. Okay. Right. Are we, um... uh, we can start our meeting again. All right. So uh, I want to talk a little bit about programs in the library. We've, uh, I've been promising you this for a couple of months now. And um, it basically is looking at the kinds of programs that we currently do. And I know that sometimes you get questions from uh, your res the residents and your neighbors saying, you know, why do they have a fandom fest? And what are they doing this for? And why are they having that for? It's a library. And they're thinking very much of the 1965 model of libraries. But we are living in a different time. There are lots of different things that our surrounding libraries are doing that our patrons are expecting out of us. And I think also they are valuable and really vital to the community. So let me just run through this. Um, I'm not putting this out for discussion tonight. I put it, I went ahead and printed it up so you could take everything home. It's a little more text heavy than I would normally like to do in a PowerPoint presentation, but because I want you to have the information to take back with you. I also am giving you a copy of the board's policy on programs so you can see what, you know, what our instruction is in terms of programs. And, um, and then at the end, I also, Kim had asked if um, we could sort of let the board know in advance what sorts of big programs we were going to be planning. Anything that involved um, working with the agencies outside of the library, any kind of an event where a reporter might be invited, you know, any, any kind of the bigger things. He thought that it would be good for the board to be made aware of those, so gave, I'm going to give you the plan for that. So. Uh, First of all, here are the different types of libraries. I've grouped them, you could group them in lots of different ways. Far and away, the great majority of the programming that we do here is literacy-based still, which it always has been. There just are a lot of different variations on it now. We have a huge variety of story times. The most recent one now is the Lapsit one, which is on Saturday mornings and is for very small babies with their parents. And it's getting good attendance. It's gradually growing. We have had reading competitions here for Battle of the Books started in 1980. So it's been a really long running program. Reading Challenge is the next age up and Lincoln Cup is now is our newest program. It just started for high schoolers. We have lots of different reading incentive programs, ways to try to get kids to read or, or adults to read <coughs> for that matter too. We have summer reading and winter reading for adults all the way through the babies. We have the 1,000 Books Before Kindergarten program, which is aimed at getting parents to read enough books for their children to help them get ready to be in kindergarten. It builds the foundation for literacy. Uh, we have Famish for Fiction that is, takes place out in the schools. We have reading assistance programs where people try to tutor kids with reading. We have Book Buddies, which is one-on-one -on -one, uh, adult or a teen reading with a child. Um, and building a relationship that it's got some consistency to it. We have, as you know, had for a long time the Reading with Rover program. And you can see one of the rovers there in the corner. Um, which is a very non-judgmental type of listener for your story. If you're just learning to practice reading with fluency, that's the purpose of Reading with Rover. Um, we have teens coming in and offering homework help in addition to the online resources we have for that. Cool. Um, we have book discussion groups, which obviously is one of our earliest programs. We have them. Uh, the sort of literary one is Book Buzz. The more popular fiction one is Book Bites, and we pair with the Glenview Library, and that's out at a restaurant every month. 
Uh, we have our Polish book group. It's actually incredibly popular. It's really um, thriving. And then uh, we have a low vision group that actually reads and discusses books together, too. Um, we have programs to learn how to write because that's another part of learning how to read. And so we have, um, it was in the director's report talking about writing for real goes on in the summer. Uh, we have bullet journal clubs for the teens where they are, you know, writing and recording their thoughts with artwork and uh, in a kind of infographic kind of way. We have share book sheets that the kids fill out where they're, you know, it's basically a book report, but calling it share a book sounds cuter than that. And um, we have the poetry contest, which we've had for many years. We currently only offer it for teens. We have offered it at different ages. Uh, we have Playbill, where the teens write their own play every summer and perform it. And then that leads to other kinds of plays. Yes, you, you all know we have the Shakespeare Project. We have children's theater, storytellers coming in. And then we have lots of author programs. So fewer than when we had Mr. O'Shea here. <laughs> so he was a good source for those. Another category of program that we have these days is for technology and hands-on skills. And this you see a lot of that being talked about these days because that's our most current programming. It's the one that is constantly changing. It's their program offerings. Every uh, issue of the newsletter are different. So these are just some examples of the kinds of things that they, <coughs> they try to teach practical skills. They have coding. They have you know, beginning Excel and very advanced, you know, pivot tables and things like that where you can go pretty far with it. Um, we have coding for all ages here at the library. And then we have, uh, they will set up specific classes to cover particular kinds of apps like LastPass for creating uh, passwords. Then all kinds of hands-on is going on here now, especially since the opening of the makerspace with particular hours. And we're getting tons of compliments about that. People are really excited about learning how to make things for themselves. And oddly enough, I really thought that the most popular things there, you know, I think of the makerspace as being real high tech and yes. fancy. Yes. Sewing machine. That's the thing that they love the most. Cool. Go figure. Ah, cool. Not everybody has a sewing machine sure. anymore. People are learning, learning to sew. So we have a category of programs that would be, I can't just said life skills, where you can learn about genealogy. We have lots and lots of programs about, on personal finance. So, and this is just estate planning, investing, protecting your credit, protecting against identity theft. There's one on auto loans coming up. Um, almost all of those programs are free to the library. It just takes staff time to book them and plan them and fill out the meeting room requests and all of those things. Uh, we have job search resources here. We have counseling. We have one-on-one -on -one counseling. And uh, they had a program a couple weeks ago where the presenter was late. So I actually got a peek into the room while they were trying to, you know, keep going while the presenter showed up. And, um, and it was a big group. It was like this whole table was full. So lots of things for people that need help with uh, refining their jobs. Search or just for wanting to change in careers. We do lots of health and wellness programs. We, uh, there's a meditation one, there was, there's a, a monthly chair yoga short session for the seniors, um, cool. we have some nutrition things, we have a lot of pro individual programs on specific health conditions like Alzheimer's say or uh, eye conditions, things like that are a couple that we've had recently. Lots of home skill, schools, gardening, cooking, learning how to repair things, and then we have sort of the whole new thing of being a citizen science, scientist where you can contribute to um, tracking butterflies or going out and counting how many different kinds of birds you see on a particular day. When I was at the Wonderground a couple weeks ago, my God, the place was packed. Yeah. It's, it was cool. And the, the kids were really getting into the subject matter. It was really Yeah, it really see. engages them very deeply. It's very cool. Uh, we have a category of programs that I'm calling learning and connecting, where you're learning a little bit of something, but the emphasis in some ways is more about connecting with other people that might be like you in some way. Our newest category program is this Generation U, which is aimed at 20s and 30s, and so some of their programs recently have been Nerds on Tap, which is a sort of book discussion group, but it's mostly technology or philosoph the philosophy of technology is what they call it, in a bar. We have, uh, the, they just had the farmer's market walk to sort of learn about all the farm to table movement and all that kind of thing. Then in the director's report, you probably saw last month they did the bad art program off at the yogurt shop. Mm -hmm. So it's things that are informal, learning a little bit of something, but really a lot about connecting with people your own age and then connecting with library resources. 
Um, we have lots of senior programming here. Uh, History Comes Alive is, is a long-running series. The Low Vision Support Group, see all the variety of senior coffee hours. Uh, we have lots of things going on for teens, uh, including more formal things and then more just one-shot things that are just to get them out and having fun. And the nice thing about that is it's not just a core group of kids that are already friends. It is a group that is gathered of a lot of different friends, a lot of different kids coming from different places and becoming friends through the activities they do here. Uh, there, there's the garden club that Cindy's been working with for a long time, and then there are major events like Fandom Fest, Maker Fest, Winter Palooza, and their summer reading kickoff. Uh, there are experiences, play, things I started out calling this cultural, but it's kind of more broad than that. It's all kinds of activities that you can do here. Listening to concerts, going to movies, going to movie related things like movie trivia, uh, that we've had a very long-running program over 10 years now called the Second Sunday Special, where the second Sunday of every month we have a family program where we bring in a performer, except for Mother's Day, because that's kind of a smaller day, but Mother's Day is always the second Sunday, so we do a Mother's Day tea that day. And then we have some programs running in series. The series that is running right now is all about Downton Abbey in conjunction with the movie coming out. But we have lots of different clubs. And then we have a number of different multicultural offerings these days. We have uh, world language story times in Polish and Spanish and Chinese, I think, and Russian. Uh, oh. And then the Polish films and discussions are, again, <coughs> huge. The Polish things are just attracting a huge audience, which I think actually is a testament to uh, one of our staff members, Christina Bannock, who's Rich Wojnicka's wife, and she's one of our adult services people. She is really getting a big community coming here. We're shocked sometimes by the number of people that will come to a Polish poetry program. And then we have our community engagement programs, which we are defining here as the things where we're leaving the library to go out into the community. And you already know about almost all of these, so I'm not going to belabor them, but these are all kinds of ways to um, work with the people that maybe can't get to the library, or in the case of the Veterans History Project, um, breakfast, it's associated with our Veterans History, oral histories, and they, that is the one time that we do, that's the one where we're counting something that they do come to the library, because it brings them. It's like the one time they get out, I think. Uh, and then, um, so this is a group that is uh, from the American Library Association. It's a subgroup of it. And it is working on analyzing library programs and trying to learn from talking to the libraries around the country what sorts of things they're doing. And so they have a list here of, uh, you know, every program that you do, you should be planning it, thinking that you, people are going to get something out of it and try to, um, you know, figure out what they're going to get. So these are some examples of outcomes that you might think people are going to get from your program. So learning something new, changing your attitude, gaining awareness of things, uh, being inspired. And then the last thing says, together libraries and communities bring, build stronger and healthier communities, which I think is not, that's not an incidental thing. I think that's a, very much our key role in the community, is I think Niles is much stronger as a community because we are here. So those are... Yeah. Oh, I was trying to remember it. I know. National something something library public program assessment. <coughs> so um, here's just a a little glimpse into some of the paperwork that some one of the departments uses for planning its programs. This happens to be digital services and the uh, person in charge. So it, program planning here takes place for the most part in the, within the departments. So each one kind of plans for their own area. And then we do some, we have committees that work on things like the bigger events. But this just gives you an example of, you know, they don't just slap these things together. Some of them go to a lot of trouble to figure out what they're going to do and, you know, and all the steps that they have to take to do it. Um, here are some of the forms they have to fill out. They have to fill out a check request form. There's uh, the contract that you would write. Um, and then there is a, also a meeting room set up for them. There are lots of different things that kind of help the library track what programs are going on. And then uh, each department has its own way of tracking which particular programs they have coming up. So these are just three different versions of spreadsheets that the different departments have come up with. No! Yes. So here's what we're planning for 2019 oh, that we haven't already had. I have a picture here from Fandom Fest last week of a little child dressed as a Dalek 
talking to the other doll like I was extremely <laughs> Yeah, I saw her. I saw her outfit. It was cool. Yeah, it was very cute. Paper. It was very cute. So these are the things we have coming up for the rest of 2019. She can read herself. And then this is what we have coming up for the next two years. The thing I want to point out, look at your page. The thing that I just want to point out is that for the coming year, we do not plan on having a major event in the spring. We, um, we have sort of run ourselves ragged at this point, trying to do these big events. So um, let's see. So for next year, uh, we will not have a major exhibit in spring of 2020. We will plan on bringing one back for spring of 2021. And we need to start looking for what that kind of exhibit or, or event would be. Mm -hmm. And so we'll be interested to hear if the board has any thoughts on that. We will be not be doing our Maker Fest this year, but we will be doing it in 2020. So we are basically alternating Fandom Fest, Maker Fest now. Because it was just, we were, like I said, this the staff was being run back. It was too much. So this is what we have planned for the next, like, 18 to 24 months. And then, so then the last thing I wanted to show you is the page that says the Wonder Woman coloring sheet. Um, so I want to tell you a little story. I'll make it fast. Uh, at Fandom Fest this last weekend, there was a room where kids could go and they could color in pictures of superheroes. And one little girl really, really wanted to color in Wonder Woman, but they didn't have a Wonder Woman. Oh. So Mary Ann, the woman that was running it, at first she thought, well, okay, I'll just draw you one. And then she said, ah, no, teachable moment. And so she suggested to her that she should make her own Wonder Woman. What do you think Wonder Woman might look like? And so this is what she drew. I believe the thing in her hand is a bubble wand, I am told. <laughs> awesome. So that's hers. And so then they copied this for all the other kids to copy to color. So now there was a, and so the last page is the um, the little girl's description of what she did that that Marianne had her write up to put under her drawing. She's ten years old and uh, and we had a display going for the last couple of weeks in memory of Toni Morrison. Toni, that's the right name, isn't it? Toni Morrison. And, uh, goes, yeah. and it, it says, if there is a book that you want to read but it hasn't been written, you must write it. And so she took that quote and she turned it into, if there's a drawing that you want to color and it has not been created, you must that make it. Nice. And then she even wrote inspiration Tony Morris oh, and so, oh, I love so, so and awesome. I'm telling you that because that to me is what uh, this kind of programming is all about is awesome. that she at that day got connected to this idea like she could be empowered to do yeah. and create things cool herself, not just copy what other people do. She got exposed to Toni Morrison, and that, I think, will be a part of her now, that, that she's, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, learned something, and that was just at Fandom Fest. And so I think all of these things expose not just kids, but people, to all kinds of different experiences that they can then expand on because we're a library, and we have all these things that they can learn from being here. So, uh, so this, together with the program, policy is what I'd like you to think about uh, in, in the next month and then we, I'll put it on the agenda again if that's okay with Tim and uh, if you have any thoughts or questions or suggestions. Oh, I'd like to hear. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. That was awesome. Very nice. <clears throat> so the last item on our agenda, I think we'll uh, bypass the executive session. Uh, if we're all in agreement. Is it Pardon me? Is it Yeah, I know. Oh, okay. Okay. Moving forward, okay. like I said, this is going to be easy. Going to go ahead. Okay. So our, then, our, then our last item is uh, an adoption of a personnel policy for the time pool. So uh, do I hear a motion to approve the adoption of proposed personnel policy 4.34 sick time pool? Um, I'll move. Okay, I can second. There we go. Mm -hmm. Susan, uh, you want to give us a quick overview of this policy? Um, okay. It's on page 53. And, uh, so, so it's 52. 53. That's the memo that's the she has. Um, so we, uh, as you know, from the beginning of the meeting, we did have a staff member who was grievously ill. She had been ill for several years fighting cancer. And she would drag herself to work immediately after chemo treatments and things like that. And she was a shelver. So it was like physically arduous work. And she was 
you know, much shorter than me, and I am not a tall person. And uh, she just was incredibly devoted to the library. And so when she became so ill and she was running out of sick time, she was getting ready to quit because, you know, she didn't feel like she could work here anymore. And so the staff really, her co-workers, really, you know, were like, I have sick time, I wish I could give my sick time to you. And so that word got of, of that got up to us in admin. And so Greg did some research on how we could set up a sick pool. My concern about it had always been that, you know, you taking unused sick time and turning it into used sick time will cost the library some money. Uh, but I think that we have written the boundaries on this in such a way that it's limiting the amount of time that people can contribute. And it is also limiting the things that you can get the sick, the sick time for. It's, it's for major or catastrophic illness. Mm -hmm. It's for someone in desperate straits. It's not for somebody that's just already burned through all their time and now they want some more time. And, it, and there are structures around them applying for the time mm -hmm. and approved, getting the time approved. We have run this by the Management Association. We got the, this policy is based on their policy. And we also found some other policies. It's not an uncommon thing to do. No, and setting no, it up in this way, uh, I think, put good enough boundaries on it that it's not going to cost the library a great deal of money. But it will make the staff feel like they can contribute something to somebody that is going through a horrible crisis. Yeah. And, and they also, one of them has suggested, and I think it's a lovely idea if you agree to it, is to name it, name the sick mm -hmm. fund after her, to call it mm -hmm. the Sophie Hedberg Memorial Sick Time Pool. That's what I have to say. Mm -hmm. um, Greg, did you have anything else? You no. Did a lot of the legwork on this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right, I, I can start off. I, the, the, the village has a similar policy to this, uh, just for everybody to know. And uh, I think it's a wonderful thing. And, and quite frankly, one way to look at it, it, it really doesn't necessarily cost the library because every employee is allowed to take whatever sick time they have. So you can't say, you know, it's because this is a person that we're using it's going to cost so that, that's not 100%. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm all in for it. I think it builds a community within the staff here. Um, and, I mean, and it, charity is uh, you know one of the virtues. And it's not that okay, you I'm have sorry. to do it. Uh, it's, okay. I'm sorry. it's okay. I'm sorry. Sorry. Yes. yes. Uh, so anyway, I when I first started, I was concerned about the press, but I have to run into it that you know, okay, this, this limits the press that I don't do that much at all. I did have a couple of questions. Um, so what's the time that we're going to sit time pool, the time will not expire or have a limit. So I mean if someone donates time, that means it'll just sort of stay in this pool indefinitely, yep. maybe for That's years easy. even if yeah. nobody needs it. That's okay. And in terms of an employee, because uh, that, I mean, I suppose what, what you could have happening that could cost a bit more is if someone retires with a lot of sick time on the books, normally that sick time is gone, never paid. But if I was about to retire, I probably would donate that time instead rather than have it evaporate if I was an employee. But it does limit the amount I could donate, so I guess it's not going to cost that much. But um, what we have happening now is that if somebody leaves to work at another library, mm -hmm. they just lose that sick time that's right. gone. Where if they are retiring, it actually does get added to some time gets mm -hmm. added to IMRF. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah. So I don't imagine that the people on the verge of retirement mm -hmm. will be contributing their time, mm -hmm. but the people that are okay. younger or, or not. Yeah. About it, well, okay. Yeah. All right. Other than the, uh, the the cost issue, which again I'm not too concerned about given the limits. The other uh, quick question I had was just about the administration of it, um, and you know who decides what is a road to test catastrophic illness or injury, and and how this fits in with your FMLA policy. You do have an FMLA policy, right? And um, and I know that in our office, we are very, very careful about keeping medical information separate from the personnel file, and only the person who handles FMLA knows anything about medical uh, issues that a person might be having. And, and I just would want to make sure that this pool, our applicants to the pool, is also, I'm not sure who handles that, if uh, the FMLA we have here in the office. Business office. And so, his, Lisey, 
would handle it, and so the people potentially who would know about it are Greg, Lisi, and me, okay. and the person, and nobody else would know about it. Okay, and uh, if someone's applied, uh, unless they talk about it, well, and well, individuals never talk about it. That's fine. Right. That's up to them. So uh, presumably the person would have to first apply for FMLA, mm -hmm. and then if they were granted that, maybe they might also be granted this. I and mean, it seems like it's a higher standard or, or, or worse. There would yeah, be more sick, more sick to get this than it would be to get FMLA. Is, right. that, is that how you're going to be able to work? Definitely. Okay. All right. I think those are my questions for now. Great. Because you're. Just about oh. in three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and she was speaking quickly. <laughs> but I no, she wasn't repeating herself. <laughs> that that is true. Got you. Oh, okay, so the question I have is regarding the last sentence of seven. Donees will not receive donations from the bank in a manner that would raise their wages above their normal compensation rate. What does that mean? So, sure. so if you're scheduled to work four hours a week, we're not going to give you a pay for eight hours a week. Uh, I see. Okay. So, coming off of that one, so the way the sick thing is, is they get the money like they were working. Okay. Okay. Just continue paying them. Yeah, I understand. Um, like they would normally get for sick things. Yep. Um, we have a very similar policy at, um, for the school district. And I think it's a good thing. And the thing is, people don't have to do it if they don't feel comfortable. Right? So I think it's a good thing. Yeah, so people need everybody to do it. Absolutely. Okay. Um, yes, uh, the last two places I worked, we were, we also had this kind of program going on. And it was very useful many, many times. And um, I think it's a great thing. No questions. No, Carolyn. I do. I, I just want to understand this. Are we? Are are the employees donating sick time to a specific individual? No. Mm -hmm. To the pool. Oh, so it goes. It has to be to a pool in order to be tax free. <coughs> Otherwise, if you do it to an individual, the person donating it um, will have to pay income taxes if they receive something of value and then took that something of value and donated it to another employee. Oh, okay. So um, by uh, creating the pool, it avoids all of the tax. Okay. I, well, that's, the, and that's honestly a part of what <coughs> think about. I guess what I'm trying to understand is if someone is terminally ill and, and everyone knows this person needs sick days, so now we're all contributing sick days to the pool, or do we just do it automatically and then should someone need it, they okay. take the second one. They draw from there? Okay. Which um, is, that event is what precipitated our feeling like we needed this and looking no, into no, it no, for no. I totally agree. Okay, thank you. So, I, didn't well, okay. So, I think it's a fantastic idea. I appreciate you guys doing this for those that are in need of it. I would just recommend because <clears throat> if somebody at a library where um, we've had IMRF for you know ever, there are still plenty of people that don't understand the ramifications of the possibility of donating their sick time and how that would affect their retirement. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I didn't read everything, but I know ours has this stipulation: if you're going to collect from it, you have had to have contributed to it. There was, we did have a clause like that, and I asked Greg to take that out because I felt like, is this is getting started, you know, somebody that's in that kind of situation may have been struggling for a long time. So, okay. for example, may, you know, would never have had the opportunity to donate any time to it. And so then they wouldn't be able to get time back out, and that just didn't seem fair to me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um. We done with this stuff. It sounds like it. <clears throat> then, would you take a look? Can, can I just ask oh, one last yes, question? Yes, absolutely. Okay, the fact that we have sick days in a fund for a period of time, do we have to identify that as money, or is that just moving it from everyone's little record to just a fund? I mean, just um, a pool. So it's not going to cost us an addition, is it? 
because we're maintaining sick days? No, we, um, the sick days are, um, the sick days hit the, uh, the profit and loss statement when they are taken. Um, until they're taken, there's, there's no accounting entry except, you know, in the, uh, in the individual's payroll record to show that they have a balance that's available for them to take. But, you know, we're not, we're not monetizing that okay, amount. Okay, this pool. Yeah. Okay. Of any symptom. Okay. And then just one last question. If you're a regular employee loses sick time after a certain time, or can they just accumulate it? Is there a difference between putting your sick time in here, or if you don't take your sick time, do you lose it, or does it just add up anyway? So if you have sick time and you decide to go to another job, all of the sick time that you have in your account vanishes. Um, if you are a one-time employee and you've built up sick time over the years, there's a 450-hour limitation such that once you hit 450 hours, um, you, you'll continue to accumulate in the year, but at the end of the year, you'll be cut back to 450 hours. So okay. you can't roll over more than 450 hours from one year to the next. Okay, but there's some rollover in place. I guess what I'm thinking, so we're going to put all our time in here, but then what can an, a regular employee be able to accumulate for themselves? You know, some people need their own time. Okay, I they, just need They accumulate it one day, uh, one day a month. Okay, but I was wondering what the, what the total amount was. Okay, that's fine. Thanks. Sorry about that. Um, I think the question about that. I thought when you leave your job and you have IMRF that those sick days go with you. No. Okay. Um, no. If you retire, if you retire, if you retire. Yes, yeah, because if, if you retire, what retire. happens is you you get additional credit on the uh, on the payout schedule. Right. Mm -hmm. But that's if you retire and you and you pull the trigger on. And getting the payments. Okay, so what if someone else went to another library? Would they get that? No. See, I didn't understand that either. Okay, that's so confusing to me. Thank you. Then yeah. Okay, Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Diane? Yes. Paul? Yes. Brenda? Yes. Tim? Yes. Sue? Yes. All right, I think we're going to um, pass up the um, executive session uh, discussion for next meeting since it's almost 9 o'clock. So. Can we get a little bit Yes. So, what are you going to do it? Yeah, I don't know. We have the other portion. Uh, does anybody have any other? Karen? I have a question. Yes, it's a uh, letter about. Special District Summit. Does anyone know anything about this? Is this? Uh, I, this is the first year that I've gotten anything about it, but mm -hmm. I guess it has been going for a while. And so I do know some of the library directors that are on uh, board there. So uh, it seems like a good thing. But I think Cindy said she was going. So. Is there yeah. is there any charge to go to this? Or and it doesn't say where it is. It says near Chicago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 that could be any like it's relative. <laughs> Okay, well, maybe I'll ask you later. Okay. Maybe call or something. Okay. I'm going to send you an email with the location. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, it doesn't get a whole lot of Okay. 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 Show and tell. This is oh. what I made at the folk art. Uh, oh, awesome. And. Is your folk dance for you? Is what? Is your whole fence No. Although I did go out and buy more pieces of fencing so I can make more. <laughs> um, I you did that freehand? Yeah. Wow. wow. Um, nice. I also uh, wanted to say when we went to the place called Wonderground, mm -hmm. I saw Susan in the hall afterwards. And she had to see the first the drawings of the five-year-old, and because they each get 
their first time they get a little notebook so they can take notes of whatever science they can draw whatever pictures. They happen to be taught discussing scale. So if you have any idea how excited these kids were to look at different molds of scat and draw pictures of scat, read books about scat, it was it was cute, it was funny. Uh, it was worth the, the time going there. And it, like I said, it was packed. There had to be at least 12 kids in that little room. And that subject. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, and when you're walking around, see if you see any scat. Okay, well, she called it something else. I called it scat. Um, then I also went to um, the family bus, and what I saw that I thought was cool, I, well, they had stuff downstairs, they, all these characters were all over the place, and it was, went over very well. But what I thought was cool is one of the guys with the dollars opened it up and let the kids look inside oh, and see cool. what the inside. My grandson was eyes this big looking in there because he watches Doctor Who with me. <laughs> so yes, it was it was cool. I definitely would go to them again in a heartbeat. Great. Mm. Sue, did you enjoy your first meeting? It was in, in my thing. A little longer than we <laughs> I mean, said, I, I would uh, must say, I just admire all the things, as I always have, of the, the Mass Libraries doing all these great new opportunities and things. It's exciting. <coughs> great. Thank you. Thank you again Here. for joining us. Uh, thank you all. And uh, I think uh, I will entertain a motion to adjourn our meeting. So moved. Second. Okay. Please take a look. Yes. 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 Yes.